There we go. Good evening and welcome to the October 7, 2013 Town of Goffstown Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, first order of business is a Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have some budget deliberations at the end of the agenda tonight. Um, but starting out the agenda, we'll start out first with the acceptance and correction of the minutes. First is the public minute from the September 23rd, 2013 meeting and the September 30th, 2013 meeting. Need to accept both sets of minutes? Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on those minutes, the public minutes? I had one on September 30th. Okay, what do you have, sir? Um, when we came out of public, non-public, the vote was, should be passed 500, not 400. That's on page one of September 30th. Okay, thank you. And the sentence below that uh, should say that the selectmen arrived um, slightly after the start of the non-public session. Okay. Thank you. Any others? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Five zero zero. Next are the non public minutes from the August nineteenth, twenty thirteen and the September thirtieth, twenty thirteen minutes. A motion for those non public minutes. Move to accept. Both sets? Yes, sir. And a second? Second. And a second? Any discussion on those two sets of non-public minutes? None? None? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0-0. Yeah. Zero, zero. Uh, yep. I apologize. On September 30th, I did have a mark in here. Okay. Uh, right page on. 21. Page 21 on September 30th. Third sentence up from the bottom, the first word in the minute says details. It should be office. Officers, the police special officers. officers. Okay. I apologize. No problem. Um, this will take a revote with that one change. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. This motion carries five zero zero. We'll have one correction by Selectman Devanza. Thank you. Right, we do have a few announcements I'd like to share with the folks in attendance and those watching on GTV. <clears throat> the first is a traffic alert for road closure of Addison Road in Goffstown. It's effective immediately. The Goffstown Department of Public Works announces the closing of Addison Road for repair of an existing box culvert related to road reclamation construction. The closure will start Tuesday, October 8, 2013. That's tomorrow and is expected to last for the next few weeks. The actual closure is from Winding Brook Road to Shirley Hill Road. The work area will be closed during the day and at night with no through traffic access. Residents will be able to access their homes but will need to enter and exit on either end of Addison Road or Kennedy Hill Road. You can see the attached detour map. This notice with the detour map, project updates, and plans are posted on the town's website, gosstown.com. Go to the Department of Public Works tab, Construction Projects, and then the 2013 Road Reclamation Projects tab. Or you can contact Alex Kanan, Assistant Town Engineer, at 497-3617, extension 227, with any questions. And we thank you for your patience during uh, that road construction work. I have another announcement. <coughs> State of New Hampshire announces a 2013 fall drawdown of lakes. So this was issued September 9th, 2013. New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, DES, has announced the annual fall drawdown of the lakes and ponds controlled by dams operated by DES in the state, including Glen Lake, Greggs Falls. The Piscataquag River will be drawn down, it says 1.5 inches, that should say 1.5 feet, a foot and a half from its normal full level, not its current level, that's important to note starting October 26, 2013. 
Since hydrologic conditions and recreation uses of these bodies of water vary, the degree and date of the start of the drawdown of each lake will vary and could be affected by the amount of rainfall during the period. In addition, the actual date at which the drawdown will begin could vary by a few days based on operational constraints. Lake drawdowns are conducted each fall to reduce winter ice damage to shoreline properties and to reduce spring flooding. Drawdowns also give property owners an opportunity to conduct any necessary repairs to their waterfront property, provided they first secure a permit from the DES Wetlands Bureau at 271-2147. And finally, I have a letter of commendation with regards to Captain Robert C. Brown III, completion of the FBI National Academy. This is a letter from Chief Patrick Sullivan dated September 26, 2013, and it reads, Captain Brown, please allow me this opportunity to acknowledge your accomplishments during your attendance at the Federal Bureau of Investigations National Academy. You recently completed 10 weeks at the Academy. This was the first time the Goffstown police, police Department has been able to send a member of our management team to this academy. During this strenuous 10-week assignment, you took six college-level courses accepted by the University of Virginia. At the completion of your studies, you made a 4.0 GPA for all of your courses. Your dedication, efforts, commitment to excellence are strong examples to your subordinates. These attributes were demonstrated in inter international forum showcasing the quality of individuals employed by the Goffstown Police Department. Well done. And our congratulations go out to Captain Brown on a job well done. That is quite an accomplishment. Yeah, especially 4.0. Mm -hmm. sure. That's all I have for notices. Do other members of the board have public announcements or notices they want to share with folks in attendance or those watching on GTV? Seeing none. Um, we'll wait a couple more minutes. It's not quite 6 10 in case, uh, case other folks show up. So, could you just start with the administrator's report? We'll stop at 6 10 and then uh, okay. go to public comment. Just let me know when I get to 6 10. We'll do. Okay. Your weekly um, meeting schedule's in here for two weeks. This Thursday is planning board meeting. Um, next Monday is Columbus Day, so there is no selectman's meeting schedule. On 10 15, there is a CMAC meeting at 6 p.m. This is steering committee in room 106. Who is the rep for them? You are. Okay, will yes. you be able to attend yes, that? Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. Um, Catherine was concerned because they need access to the building. So you'll be providing yes, access. I All will. right, thank you. 1016, uh, which is Wednesday, it's the Library of Trustees at the library. On that same day will be Parks and Rec at Parks and Rec Center. And Thursday is the Budget Committee. Are all of those other meetings covered? I will not be here for Wednesday's Parks and Rec. I've got library on Wednesday already. Can someone stand in for... Nick, um, take care of it. Sixteen. Thank you, Mark. Mark? Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Okay, your consensus folder tonight includes event permits: Maple Lab Elementary School Halloween Parade on October thirty-first, from one fifteen to two fifteen; Friends of the Gosstown Rail Trail Ski and Skate Sale, November 9th, ten to two. Um, and then they had an amendment to the Gosstown Main Street event permit with a movie uh, for the Gosstown. Well, the Great Pumpkin Weekend, uh, with a movie night on 1019, hay rides on 1019, and a craft challenge on 1019. And I've worked it out with Robbie that they'll use the employee lounge for the craft because we have this all set up with mics and everything. Uh, right to inter, uh, Gasso at Shirley Hill Cemetery, Section 1, Lots 25B and 26B. You have a junkyard license renewal, Hebert's Junkyard. You have a contract amendment for, you already voted on this last week, but it's just to sign the paperwork for the additional scope of work from McFarland Johnson. Uh, you have an agreement amendment, a change order for the design of Uncanoonic design, uh, Uncanoonic dam design um, by Dubois and Kings. You also voted on that last week. This is just a signature paperwork. Uh, town hall holiday schedule and the highway safety grant operation safe commute. This is a budgeted and annual renewing, um, mm -hmm. reoccurring grant, uh, which reimburses the town for six hours per month of patrols. Motion needed to accept the consensus vote. I'll make a motion to accept the consensus vote. I have a motion and a second. Second by... Yes, sir. Mark. Okay. 
Any discussion I on this? I think there's a question. Just a oh. question. Just on the, uh, the highway safety grant, does the grant cover overtime for officers that have to go to court for summonses that they issue? I think this was a safety patrol, but the chief is here. It just covers the six hours they work, right. not the court. So that so we have to cover that? Right. Any other questions or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? I say no. One, one in opposition. So the motion carries four one zero. Thank you. And it is six ten, so we'll take a break from the town administrator's report for public comment. If there's members of the public who'd like to comment, please come on forward, state your name and share your thoughts with us. Hi, my name is Nancy Lamper and I live in Pernardville. A statement was made last week by Sue DeRusso that kind of upset me and um, I wanted to ask her some questions about that statement. Representative John Burt was commenting that he wanted to get a petitioned article on the ballot requ um, regarding returning the grant money. And um, your comment was you had a legal opinion uh, regarding petition articles that are put before the voters. Um, the quote was, uh, even though a petitioned article passes town meeting, it doesn't have to happen. The Board of Selectmen decide. You can do a petitioned article and you have every right to do so, but whether it passes or not is still a decision of the Board. So my question to you is, um, my impression from that statement is that us voters don't count. Whether we get up, we go to the polls, we vote, we do what we're supposed to do as citizens. And that kind of really um, confused me that we do this, we're trying to teach these, this stuff and the responsibility, and for you to make that statement kind of really upset me that um, I took it that it doesn't matter that one way or the other, whether we vote, no, we want this to be sent back or whatever the case may be, that you don't take our feelings into consideration, that you people are the ones ultimately that can make that decision and only you. Um, I just, I have a problem with that. Nancy, is it? Yes. Yeah. The board didn't say that. I gave no, I know. legal opinion. Um, and the reason lawyers, I think, sometimes give those kind of legal opinions is if someone said, okay, I want a 60-mile speed limit through the main street, mm -hmm. and somehow it passed, it wouldn't be prudent or safe for the board to vote to do that. So that's why they leave the final decision up to the board, and that was a legal interpretation. But After interpreting state law. Right. Okay, in that instance, as far as it being a speed limit, I can understand speed limits, but what this was in regard to is the grant money to be sent back. Right. It has nothing to do with speed mm -hmm. limit sign. Um, so there is a difference there. Oh, there's definitely a difference. And the board would consider everything <coughs> about the subject matter. Okay, so if you were asking, if a petition asks the board to break the law, they're not going to break the law. Right. No, I understand right. that. That's that's why that legal opinion was given. Okay. So I, think I prefaced it when um, Representative Burt brought it up. I said there was a question and uh, for a legal opinion on a speed limit in town. That wasn't the one, but I'm just using that as an extreme example. Okay, but okay. I, I just wanted to bring that up because I'm not the only one that kind of took it that way. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a few other people out there that feel the same way I do. Um, we're here as citizens. We're trying to do the best we can. Yes, you guys woke us up with Planned Pernardville. You got us here. We're, I'm not going anywhere. I just try to you know, stay in my own little town and listen. I try not to pass judgment on anybody or insult anybody. And I do have to say that 
I'm sitting here and I've listened, and like I said, I'm here tonight, but I can't say the same. This is just a little piece of what I've heard. I've heard a lot of stuff, um, and I'm beginning to think that maybe somewhere along the line, some lines have been crossed that's trying to say that we don't matter. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to refer back to this only because this is my top thing. Um, we do matter. And unfortunately, whether anybody wants to admit it, uh, without us in the town, there wouldn't be a town. My next question would be, um, how would I say that? Okay, I'm not going to even go there. We're going to leave that just the way it is, but thank you for your answer. Yeah. You're welcome. Can, and I, can, you I just, can I just comment just briefly on that? I'm glad Sue was able to clarify that for you, and I hope that did provide some clarification. A little bit. It, it, still, uh, it still makes me feel, I mean... Well, I think she gave a couple of pretty good examples. I know it's, it's not exactly comparing apples to or apples, but I mean, I think she gave a couple of good examples whereby petition articles may not conform to law or other aspects that we have to consider, and so we have to take that into consideration. Um, so... And, and, you, and let me just... And, and you do matter. You do matter. I mean, you elect this board. We're here to serve the citizens. That's why we sit here. That's why we run. That's why we perform the work that we perform, is on behalf of the citizens. Um, we heard loud and clear. We allowed public comment to go on at great length, oh, I and uninterrupted until everybody, and I mean everybody, who wanted to speak had a chance to speak at every public meeting. Um, so we did listen, and I, and I think we heard. I mean, the process has moved and flowed the way that I think that you and others had hoped it would. So, I mean, I just want to reiterate that you do matter, and, we, and, and I believe we listened. We sat here and listened long and hard to what folks had to say. Anybody else want to comment on the board? No? Thank you for your comments, ma'am. Yes, please. My name is Gady Benner, and I live in Pernardville, and I would like to elaborate a little bit on what Nancy said, okay? First of all, I think you folks have way too much power, number one. Things have to change, all right? Number two, we paid many of your salaries. I know that the selectmen don't make very much, mm -hmm. but we, we do pay salaries to this town. All right, and you folks are supposed to be employees of ours, and you're supposed to be representatives of ours, okay? But you have not been listening, all right? And no, you have not listened, Mr. Mr. Adams, at all, okay? Because you you chose to continue Planned Parenthood when we asked you not to, and it was very insulting. I, I saw this on GTV too, okay? When Mr. Burt asked you to return the money. And when, when Mr. DeRusso says, well, we don't have to because we can do whatever we want, basically. That's how I took it, okay? That is very, very bad. Mr. Um, Nick did, did speak for us, and he says, well, you know something? When, when you folks uh, speak, I will listen to you, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Nick, for saying that, okay? All right, and getting back to my sign again, all right? It's, it's a sign that a person, that the, our people want in Pernardville. We have six, 600 signatures, okay, 600 signatures, 200 emails, 150 plus people came, and we have verification on film that all the people in Pernardville want a sign so we can be notified of public meetings that regards us, okay? Has to do with planning, zoning. <coughs> we need to know because we cannot have things slipped in again. Okay, and getting back to the conversation of things slipping in, all right, you, you did, I'm sure, receive my, my lengthy email that I sent, I believe it was on a couple days ago, okay, it was very upsetting to find out that we have another program in the works right now that 99.9% .9 of our people do not know about it. On two websites, www.readysetgonewhampshire.com. And also another program that might have been on the, on the web for a little longer, the www.metrocenter, 
uh, NewHampshire.com, okay? As I said, 99.99% of our people do not know about this, okay? Once again, it's like Plant Pernardville deal. Our town did not make an effort to advertise this to the people, okay, of what they're doing. And um, these, these sites are already built. Our town information is already on there. All right, we're inviting anyone around the world, China even, to come and buy our land. All right, China already has, okay, our our work. All our work's gone there. Okay, and now we're going to be we're going to be selling them our land. I mean, what's next? I mean, this is horrible. More and more government control. Also, this is part of uh, Southern New Hampshire um, Planning Committee. Okay, is this the plan that these? These people that were on the ad hoc uh, committee that was going to make money on before, is this another chance for them to pick up, you know, what they lost maybe? This is very, very, very disturbing. Are we going to get stuck with massive low-income housing with this program? Um, is it going to be something that's built that, that's not going to be safe for our environment? Uh, what's going to happen? Okay, something about certifying sites and are we going to build anything? on these sites, and we're going to get stuck with this. The landowner is going to make money. You know, the, the attorneys, the builders are all going to make money with this, and we get stuck with the consequences and the side effects. All right? We don't want that, okay? And we want to be informed about this, and we have the right. We have the right, okay? We're asking that you send a big mailer, all right, and you explain to the people what's going on. Either that or you end this program altogether, all right? We don't even know if all these steps have been properly taken, all right? You know, we're, we're just in the midst of trying to find out what our, our, um, our laws are and what we can do to stop things because we can't let anything go. You have too much power, you know? Um, <clears throat> some of these steps here with this uh, Ready, Get, Set, Go program, you're supposed to hold a public hearing to decide whether or not you should even participate in this uh, program. I would like to ask, okay, publicly this evening, has that been done? Or have you put us on the site without us even knowing? All right? That's what it looks like because I surely didn't know about it, and I've been following programs pretty close lately. All right? So this is very important. We need to know, has a hearing been held on this? All right? Have, have you done mailers? Because I didn't get it. And I've been at the same address for 30 years, so it's not because the mail came back. Um, we need to know the, the minutes of these meetings. Has it been sent to Southern New Hampshire? We need to know all these five steps here. Have they been taken already, you know, have, has action already been taken on that? Okay. And another thing also, I am publicly asking you this evening to elect me or appoint me, I should say, as part of the budget committee because I feel like we're being taxed without being represented. All the other committees are on, on here are being represented, okay? The schools are on here, the school board, the fire, the police, the water precinct. Everybody gets a piece of the pie. Everybody gets to be represented. But what, help, what, help, what happens to us, the people, and to the business owners? We don't even get direct. We can't even get a budget of $500 for a sign. I mean, that's, that's unfair. So I'm asking you, please let me be part of this budget committee for this year. Could you tell me publicly this evening whether or not you're going to allow me to do that? Budget committee members are elected. Are there any appointment, appointed positions? I don't believe they're all. They're all elected positions. They're, they're, all, point, uh, they're all elected, and then there's representatives from the school, right. the board of selectmen, right. and the two water precincts. So would you I believe there might be vacancies, though, right now, because I believe the committee is 16, all right? And... Um, I, I really, really would like, you know, the chance of being on this committee to help the people because we need to be represented because right now it's uh, pay but you can't play and that's not fair, all right? We need a category for residents and I want to represent the residents. Well, the elected positions are the residents. Twelve of the 16 positions are elected. Those are residents. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any openings. I haven't been notified there were any openings in the budget. Who's our rep to budget committee? Is Mark, you. Mark, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know of any openings? Well, we can find out. We can find yeah, out. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I'd have to. Okay. Last time we had a meeting, it was a pretty full house. And I'd have to check the law on that and who. Uh, budget uh, committee. I believe the budget committee appoints uh, to fill any vacancy. Correct. Well, according to this RSA 32 that I pulled out, um, members can be either elected or appointed, and they can be appointed by the selectmen, according to this paper here. No, we're an official um, budget committee. 
So you have to read all of Chapter 32. The only appointment the board does is whoever's their rep to the budget sure. committee. So, some towns do not have an elected budget committee. Yes. They're appointed. This town has voted to have a, an elected mm -hmm. budget committee. We were overlooked as people, though. We're not even in that category. We, there's not even a category for, for residents. There there's no category for the 12 business people. The town with 12 positions are residents. Who Anybody get elected. can run for them. But I'm, I'm saying, though, for, for the specific categories, we're not even there in there as a category. Okay, the school, the 12 people who are elected are residents of the town. They At put large. their name in and they run for election. Right. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say. All right, you have uh, you have a category for all the schools. All right, so all the budgets. You have a budget for all the schools. Okay, they're all being represented. The water precincts being represented. One the police department, the police department, the fire oh, department. Oh, I okay, see. and there's I know no category saying. for resident. And there's no category for business people, and I think there should be. The budget committee has reps to every department. And but we want to be a department too then, all right? Because we should be. Because we, we should have some kind of direct, um, we should be able to, to get a little bit of budget, let's say for a sign, for instance, okay? And we should be able to review, you know, what's going on for other departments. So please take that in consideration. <laughs> and out of 16 people, I mean, it's kind of hard to believe that there's no vacancy right now. I mean, is everybody showing up to the meetings? Well, we'll find out for you. Okay. I appreciate that. I, I will look also tomorrow. And another item, too, that I wanted to speak about, though, I wanted to get back to the $140,000 that um, Brian was looking for, okay, to maybe further the uh, master plan. Well, the plan Pernardville was supposed to help Pernardville. So I'm saying in lieu of giving it to him and creating a big problem with the master plan, please give the money to the businesses on Mass Road to help them spruce up their businesses. I think that would be fair. That would help revitalize Pernardville, all right? Maybe we can take some money and, um, you know, help out one of the daycares there. Let them buy paint with that, maybe a new linoleum. Um, maybe we can put some of the people that are not working in Pernardville to work and help spruce out the businesses. Let's take that money. Instead of making a plan, all right, getting a bunch of papers that we might not ever, ever use, let's actually do something with it to pretty up Pernardville. And I would even take responsibility to take applications for that, to assess who gets who, who gets what. I would do my best to, to put that money to best use. Um, we did just check. There are no open elected at large members of the budget committee at this point. Um, the elections are coming up in March, so how many how many positions are going to be up for? Do we know for the election? Two, three, four. It looks like there will be four positions that will become open for. So that doesn't help March. us though for this year's budget, though, well, does no, it? No, it'll be March though. You know. Okay. Yeah, and watch uh, online, and we also post it at town hall and the library. Um, there's a filing period for candidates. Right. Okay. Well, if you see that members, you know, can't can't serve this year or aren't showing up, please keep me in mind. We we do put it on the website, so anyone oh. wants to mm -hmm. apply for it can apply for it. But it's a budget committee that appoints to that committee. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening. Hi, Cheryl Anderson. I'm the Pernardville sector of Boston, and that's with a C, Cheryl. I noticed it was an S at one time. I just have a few questions, nothing big. Um, I want to explain when people are, go from one board and they're on several boards, whether it be select a new on another board, a planning board on another board, why do they have voting rights on, on all the different boards? Isn't that sort of like having a double vote sometimes? That's how I perceive it anyway. Yeah. So some do, some do and some don't. Right. Okay. It's Friends. all dictated by state right. law, which ones can, which ones can't. There's, there's certain... Um, combinations of boards and committees that you can't serve on at the same time. That's restricted by state law. The state law also dictates which, when you're appointed by the board of selectmen, whether you have a vote on that committee or, or board or not. Okay. So, but it's all spelled out in state law, so we have to comply with the state law. Can you tell me what law that is? Just because I don't. Know. Oh boy. Or well, can you? Can you? It's yep. threaded throughout the law. <laughs> I can't oh, send you. it's like a really one of those yeah. long. It's, it's state law. You know? Well, it's in different places, <laughs> but I can send you. That's Representative Bird. He knows how state okay. law is made. All right. <laughs> um, it's under sh uh, shade trees, right, John? <laughs> yeah. I actually don't have email. I can't afford it yet. But can you send it to him for me? Sh to, to John? Yeah, John? Sure, please. Sure. Okay. 
And also I wanted a copy of all the Board of Selectmen, the rules, regulations, what's under their purview, and what's considered for private meetings, what's for public meetings, things like that. Is that something you have online? That's right to know why. Yeah. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have that? Any familiar kind of, with that? Yes. Yeah. Can that be emailed? Or? Um, I'd just like to understand It's quite what. lengthy. It's at, at the state website. Oh, is that a document, a separate document? Yeah, it, it's um, a PDF or anything like that. Chapter 91A3. So. I can give her that. Yeah, that's just part of it. Just kind of an abbreviation. Yeah, like, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Does it have the, the um, It has the RSA okay. on it. Okay. Right. But it's, it's not total. It's just kind right. of like. But I can look just the highlights. The packets, yes. So they know when. Kind they of like a guide for us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very right. much a reader's <laughs> diary. <that's laughs> yes. I'm sure it's lengthy. <laughs> like yeah. there's several sections to sure. these that are not printed. Um, with regard to the petitioned article and not, it's not necessarily guaranteed what the voter says will happen. Um, is how then what method did the voters have for getting something on the ballot that can't be vetoed by the board? Is there any method by well, which they can do that? How, how do I describe this? I, I think if it went on as a petition article, and I'll speak for myself, and I suspect I probably am speaking for at least the majority of fellow board members, that if some, a petition article goes on and it's voted on by the people and approved, and it doesn't <coughs> violate any state law and it doesn't put anybody's health or safety at risk, um, you have a tough time making a, an argument for voting against it, and an even tougher time making an argument if you were to rerun for election. Okay. I mean, that's the way the process works. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. follow me? Getting, yeah. <laughs> I mean, without coming out saying it, I mean, that's how the process yeah. would work. Okay. I just the context in which you brought it up made me question if it were, if there were regulations about which ones you veto and which ones you don't, or whether it was if just it's a illegal opinion. or well, like yeah, I you think, said. I think hit it on the head. If it's illegal or poses a significant a threat to the health and safety of the general people of Gosstown. Okay. I think we have an obligation to the greater community to do the right thing. Understandably, under those be? circumstances, yes, yeah. I could see that. If, if I right, could um, add to that. Okay. Oh, you want to? Well, I just wanted to explain also, where New Hampshire is not a home rule state. The Board of Selectmen only has the power that is given to it through the, legisl the state legislature. So unless it's in an RSA, we don't have, it's, that power is not vested in us. And so in many cases, if you look up a particular area that gives us power, it may define how a resident can, for instance, an ordinance. Board of Selectmen have the power to have two public hearings and then vote an ordinance in. Okay. But it, there is a provision in there that says if a resident puts in a petition warrant article before we take our final vote, that particular ordinance has to go on the ballot. Okay. So if you look up what it is that the board is doing at the time, if that power is listed in the state RSAs, there may or may not be a section in there that says how a resident or how the citizens can affect that decision. Okay, if I look this stuff up in here, it'll be in this whole big long it's, board of selectmen. It's okay. it depends. If it, the ordinances are in a different section, it's it's all over the okay. the statutes. It's confusing that, when you try to look is. everything up. Yeah. You can't find one place. Oh, where it's you very just confusing. Can, yeah, and that's contrary to a home rule state where the states get broad authority to the towns, the home, if you will, to rule. Mm -hmm. how they okay. conduct their own business. New Hampshire is not one of those towns, unfortunately, I mean states, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Um, do you know when it's going to be on the planning board, the smart code? Have you heard from Brian at all if he's talked to Mr. I Heichel? I have not heard. Um, Mr. He did talk to Mr. Heichel about putting <coughs> it on the agenda, okay. and it will be on the agenda. I don't know when. I didn't get a date. Because they have, have to post date? it, right? 24. 24? That's what John Heichel told me today. October 24? 24. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No, thank you. That's fine. I think it's going to be a public meeting, too, right? Um, what is the, how do you go about um, filing to run for a position on any particular board? Is, is there There's just one general application that applies for all the boards? Well, or? there is elected positions and appointed. And there's a filing period, and it's a specific range. And it's fairly narrow. I think it's only two weeks, isn't it, or something along those lines. So you know, know what the period is? Uh, it's on our website. I don't know. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, it's I don't have internet, so it's pretty oh, hard to right. find yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Um, well, maybe Sue can get, on, get to it real quick here. Okay. I don't think we've posted them yet for no, 2014, so. yeah. but oh, I but can okay. look back to... But it's usually sometime in February you post, and then the postings close, and then folks have an opportunity to campaign, put out their signs and whatnot for a few weeks leading up to the election. So elections are in March, so yeah, beginning in February would make sense. So there's just some kind of application you fill out that's just yes. general for the whole town, or each board has a specific application? Well, I just I want to differentiate between elected positions and appointed yeah, yeah. positions, because we have some committees that are appointed. 
So, okay. for example, um, Parks and Rec Commission, that's appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Conservation Commission is appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Um, then there are the elected, and I don't know if I've covered all the appointed, there's probably many more appointed positions, but then there's the elected ones, Planning Board, ZBA, Budget Committee, Selectmen, Moderator, Supervisor Checklist, um, Library Trustees, Cemetery Trustees. Those are all elected. Clerk, those are all elected. So you positions. do have to file for those positions the, in the that are open during that. With that particular with the town committee, clerk. oh, the no, town with clerk. the town clerk yeah. for all the she handles all elections. <clears throat> so if you want to file for any elected position, you file with Is the that town Kathy clerk. Ball or? Yes. Yep. Okay. And yeah. but the appointed well, ones, you come that, apply, that, apply here. Well, well you make the, yeah. There's a form you can fill out saying you have a desire to serve on a certain committee, a commission, or board. Um, and if there's openings, then that recommendation will go to that particular committee. Okay. Board and they'll take it up, and if they uh, think they want to fill it and they've got a good candidate, they'll bring a recommend recommendation back to us, and we'll approve the recommendation to fill the, fill the openings. And okay. any one, any appointed position that's expiring in uh, in March, we put it out in February on on the website again. But we we also do a hard copy at town hall, okay, on the bulletin board, so <clears throat> you know that it's expiring and you can apply for those positions. Okay. The incumbents may also apply. And yeah. The recommendation will come to this board. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I had a question is I was looking over the budget. I noticed that we paid dues to Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission of eleven thousand one hundred four dollars. What do we pay that for? What do they well, give us? Start. <laughs> what do they give us? Well, they give traffic us studies. You know, traffic studies is one of the big ones. Um, a lot of times, if you've driven around town and see seen the rubber hoses laying across the road with the the things that they're counting cars. That's so not the police doing that? No, that's yeah. usually Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission. The purpose of that is to figure out where the what are the highest used roads, which are in the worst condition, you know, try and help us put together how we ought to approach, you know, our, our roadway network and, and developing traffic studies, which uh, are important, are an important tool. Okay. Uh, is there change. any other thing that we pay for? Yeah. You know um, what would be good is to give her a copy of the annual report because Southern yeah, New Hampshire Planning true. Commission makes an annual report to us of what they've done in town. So that would give you a complete list. Okay. Yep, that's right. that's good Is that something you can email? We can give you uh, it's online, but I can also. It's also at the library. It's also at the library, and I can okay. give you a copy yeah. from upstairs. Yeah, we have I can come into town and pick it up. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. I think that, kind of that pretty much answered all my questions. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Someone else would like to be heard? Yeah. Yes, sir. Dana Benner, 12 Darby Street in uh, Nardville. Good evening. Good evening. I got something completely different. I'm actually going to talk about the budget. Okay. And I'm one of these people that uh, lost my job in the big economic crash that we went through. Now, I'm also working now three part-time jobs as an adjunct teacher. So my concern now is my taxes which are going to be going up from and I so I've been I work at night tonight I just don't happen to be teaching tonight so I'm here but uh, during the day I get to watch on GTV so I get to catch up on all the meetings that you guys have been doing now from what I can figure out per the selectman's October 7th package it looks like our taxes are going to be going up uh, approximately $1.53 for the school portion and $0.33 cents for the town, which means my taxes are going to go up to a little bit over five grand a year for where I live. Now, obviously, I don't make a whole heck of a lot of money. Out of my money, I pay for my, my insurance for my family. And I pay taxes. And I pay these massive salaries of people that work for our town. Who get also get a boatload of benefits that I don't get. So I'm paying out out of my money that I'm earning for other people to cruise. And I, you know, I, don't, I don't really think it's fair. Um, in reviewing the budget, uh, I'm looking at the town and I'm I'm seeing the the DPW guy saying I want a new truck, and this truck is broken and whatever the case may be. And I see Mr. Brown saying we'll fix it. 
which is cool. I liked what he said. And I see the fire chief saying, we need new fire stations, we need new this, we need the new truck, we need this, we whatever. And I see the police department, we need new cruisers, we need new this, we need new that. To me, it looks like the town is a, as a mother pushing a shopping cart through Toys R Us. And the DPW, the fire department, and the police department are the little kids in the carriage going, Mommy, I want that truck, I want that car, I want this. Let's be realistic. There's a lot of people in this town who aren't working or are working at a lesser job than they were working or are working like myself a whole bunch of part-time jobs because nobody hires full-time anymore so they don't have to pay you benefits. Now, I have a master's degree in education with a specialty in heritage studies. I'm teaching at college, but it's an adjunct professor, it's an adjunct positions. You get paid only when there's enough students to take the course. So if they don't take the course, you don't teach. You don't teach, you don't get paid. Try telling the electric company or the oil guy who's filling your tank or the tax collector when your bill comes due. Oh, I didn't teach this time, but I'll catch you up next time. You think that's going to fly? No. I'm looking at a library budget of $740,000. Have you guys been in the library lately? There's four books in that dang library. We have computers that you can't use because there's other people in there playing video games and stuff on the computers. I don't see where we have $740,000 for that library. It's not even equivalent to the Manchester Library. You know, it's unreal. I mean, there's four employees at the library. I'm looking at the, the 2014 town budget in the library. For salaries, we got $4,008. Oh, 400. $408,000. 400, $408, okay, I'm sorry. Are they making $100,000? Hush, please. So you got, a, you got librarians making $100,000? I got a master's in education. I'll take the job for 55. I'll take it for half what they're getting paid. I'd love to. That would be great. So what are we getting for this $700,000? I, I, I can't figure that out. We go to, let's see what else, what else was on? I had this all numbered out. We, we pay, our, our town employees way too much. I, I, I actually worked as a um, substitute teacher for the Gosstown High School. I got paid dirt as a substitute teacher. Got a master's degree, which is more than some of the teachers had. Oh, I get paid dirt. I wasn't allowed to teach them. I was a, I was a big, big old babysitter. <coughs> But I, while I was there, I got to talk to a lot of the other employees. You have paraprofessionals, people that take care of the, the, the kids with the special needs. And, and these people work real, real hard. They don't get paid squat either. You have like $9, $10 an hour or something along that lines. Maybe, maybe up to $15 an hour, but not that much. For, what, for the work that they do for these kids, The high school principal makes over $99,000 a year. The school, the, the, and, and I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'm going to hit a chord with this, but be it what it may. Our town administrator makes over $100,000 a year. That's more than four times my salary. Plus, Benefits, retirement, cafeteria, longevity, the list goes on. Four times, her, her base salary is four times what I make. I'm paying her four times what I make. I don't see where that's fair. Now, I have ways of trying to correct this problem. I'm not just bitching. I'm gonna. I have ways of trying to correct it. <clears throat> to kill the snake, you got to cut its head off. 
So this is where we start. We need to cut all town employee salaries that people that make $55,000 to $75,000 to cut it by 10%. People who make $75,000 to $100,000 a year, cut it by 20%. That library budget slashed the heck out of that son of a gun. The DPW budget, fix the trucks you got, use the money that you've been given already more efficiently. You don't need, you know, you got, you're filling one pothole, you don't need one guy with a shovel and five people watching them. <coughs> I've seen it happen, I've driven around. You see them mowing the lawns, you got one guy with an orange vest standing by the side of the road and one guy driving the lawnmower. What the heck is that garbage? You can see the lawnmower, it's big as a damn truck. You know, so there's things that we can do to, to cut. I, and I, I think the fire department and the police department are some of the most important people that we have because they protect our butts from all sorts of things. But let's be reasonable. Let's be reasonable. Like my, unfortunately, like my wife said, I, I am more, I am more than willing to serve on some kind of committee, and I will be uh, running because things have got to change. Uh, if I ran my household budget like this town runs its budget, we would be out on the street already. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. Period. I mean, Mr. Adams, you told my wife at the last meeting she was here that that $500 for her sign wasn't in the budget. Where are we going to get it? We're going to have to come up with it someplace. Well, come on, 500 bucks, big deal. You know, in the in the big scheme of things, it's big deal. You want it, you cut, you do those cuts like I suggested, or even some of the cuts like I suggested, or look at some of the cuts that I suggested. You're going to come up with the money you need to do other things that are more important. I mean, people get paid way too much and just the, the, you gotta cut, like I said, you gotta cut the head off the snake in order to kill it. So that's what I got to say. Thank you. Can I just make one yeah. comment, just sure. relative to the budget process, mm -hmm. I hope you know that we're just beginning it now. All we've heard, oh, the, I know. All we heard at this point are the department heads' wish lists. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, tonight we start in earnest the discussions on mm -hmm. those individual department budgets and whether or not they're realistic, what can we can do about it. Uh, we don't know that taxes are going to go up next year. We've, we're committed as a board to doing whatever we can to lessen that impact to everybody. Everybody in town is going to be impacted by any tax increase. So that's our job is to look at these initial department head budgets and find out where we can make adjustments, make cuts, trim things here and there to, to, to lessen to the greatest extent possible the impact to the Gosstown taxpayer. So and we're committed to doing that. We're just starting the process tonight. So, you know, like, you know I don't, not, not to mean to interrupt you, Mr. Adams, I apologize. That's no problem. But like what Mr. Brown said, you know, when he said, you know, fix the trucks, mm -hmm. you know, fix them. If I use my truck every day to go back and forth to work. If my truck, if the I blow a gasket on my truck. I got to fix it. I can't go out and buy a new truck because I'm using my truck in it and something breaks on it. I got to fix it. <clears throat> if the body has a hole in it, I got to fix it. I put a lot of miles. I drive from here to Littleton, from here to Claremont, from here to Lebanon to teach at night in the snow. So I have to have a vehicle that keeps me going. But I can't afford the my budget doesn't say you can go out and afford to buy a new vehicle because something breaks. That's what has to be done. These town, you know, I know it's on a grander scale, but yeah, it's got to be done. So, and and it's and one other thing as far as the uh, the that the uh, master plan. Um, I think Sue. I think last time you said it's something. It, it's like every five to ten years that it's reviewed. Push it out to the 10 year. We're not at the 10 year mark. Push it out. I mean, I know Brian is, is trying to push for that $140 to revamp it or redo whatever he's got to do to it. Push it out. 
Push it out to the 10-year mark. That's 140 you don't have to come up with in this budget. And, and also, as far as when Brian contacted Mr. Heichel for that, for about that planning thing, so I, I was talking to Mr. Heichel today about this whole thing. And Brian was trying to get, keep him from having it become a public meeting because he didn't want the 150 people standing in the hallway speaking their mind to the planning board. He did that twice to Mr. Heichel, according to what Mr. Heichel told me. Tried to convince him not to have it open to the public because he didn't want people speaking up. Which to me sounds like it's somebody trying to suppress our right to speak at, a, at, a, at an elected official meeting, which in my book is a bozo no-no. And so I think that, for what it's worth, Sue, that's, I just want to bring it to your attention. I don't, I, I don't think Brian was opposed to being a public hearing. There are two steps to the process. One, the first step is, and, and they're all public meetings, okay, but I think you're talking about public hearing. Right. Um, I think the first step was to find out if the planning board wanted to move it forward to a public hearing. If they don't and they're just going to vote it down, then there's no sense of having a public hearing. I think that was Brian's All message. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what, what uh, Mr. Heichel told me. Okay. So, and, I, and when he told me that, I was like, you know, this is, this is really starting to tick me off. I mean, I was, I was living in this town and I'm sit for 30 years, and I, unfortunately, I was one of the ones with the blinders on. You know, I let the town do whatever they want. Whoever was here, not, not pointing a bloody finger at anybody here, but whoever was here at the time making their decisions <clears throat> for whatever reason they were making their decisions, and I was, I was just being fat and happy, sitting back going, hey, okay. <clears throat> Plan Pernard Bill lit a fire under my hiney, and now I'm here, and I'm not going to go away. You guys are probably going to see me a lot. Maybe screaming my names in your sleep. I don't know, <laughs> but but the thing is, but but I'm going to be here, and I'm going to I'm going to fight for what I think is right, and and I just want to bring that to everybody's attention. But I think the budget is very important. Mr. Bennett, do you know that the budget committee holds public hearings as well and solicits comment from the public as yeah, we move forward? Yeah, like I said, I work at night. Okay, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they take them in writing. Oh well. The, the, I, I, I make I make my voice known to a okay. lot of different people. I just so. didn't know if you were aware of that. Oh yeah. We appreciate your comments. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else? Anyone? Yes? Can I have another turn? You may. I just wanted to pick up where my husband left off. Oh, she <laughs> I just wanted to um, speak on the budget a little bit. Okay. Gaby Benner again. Okay. What is really sad is when I was looking at the budget, okay, and I did actually see how, how much some of our employees are making. Um, I just wanted to get back to that. Um, okay, the, I know some, from what I recall, some of the paraprofessionals were only making like 14, oh, I have it over here, $14,159, okay, which could come to maybe about $9 an hour. Custodians and head cooks in the schools make only maybe twenty thousand two hundred twenty nine dollars, which comes to thirteen dollars. And um, I mean, how can they pay? All right, they're average citizens just like us. But how can they pay someone's salary that's maybe four to five times as much as what they're making? It, it's terrible. Again, um, we should we should do a a salary cut across the board because we are in a desperate state right now. Okay, just listen to our news. Our um, government owes more than $17 trillion. Our government right now is shut down. Our government's trying to own everything also. We have to make cuts, all right? And when we have senior citizens, okay, my, my mother is a senior citizen. She's 86 years old. You know how much he has left at the end when she pays her... Um, a Social Security um, insurance plus her uh, supplemental insurance, which comes to like $350 a month. She's got $750 left. And I believe uh, Mr. Burt's neighbor has maybe about $800 left at the end of the month. So how can people like that pay real estate taxes that keep going up? When I first moved to um, Panardville, my real estate taxes were maybe a little over $1,000. Now they're going to be over $5,000. They keep going er up every year. Every year, 
You know, it comes to a point where we're going to be taxed out of our homes and we're going to be homeless. And we need to speak up. We're paying salaries, but the salaries of, of some of our town uh, workers are way too much. We need to increase our uh, cook's salaries, our peri professionals are working very, very hard, and we need the ones that are making a lot of money to take a cut. Just in uh, retirement benefits, though, it's going to make us go bankrupt <laughs> also. In the police department um, retirement fund, I want to say it was close to 500000 And in our insurances for benefits for retirees, uh, we were seeing that it costs us over $2.5 million to, re- to insure people that aren't even working here anymore. I mean, that's ridiculous. And I think in the book that I saw that um, Sue was gracious enough to give me, the 2012 uh, budget book, um, is it that we're insuring, um, it seems like we're insurance, insuring more retirees than we are actually town people. Where There was like 30-plus uh, retirees we were insuring and maybe only 24 town people. That doesn't make sense. And getting back to the library um, budget, I really agree with my husband. That's ridiculous. $740,000 budget for a library, and it's costing us over 400000 for employees' uh, salaries, and it looks like there's only four employees that, live in, that are working there. And in addition to that, too, the benefits for the library, um, I'm not sure what the benefits include, but it's 83000 the retirement um, budget for that is like 27000 That's over $100,000 in benefits. we got to stop that. When one person's making over $100,000, and then we have the little guy that's making 14000 that's, what, nine times as much. We have to stop this. We have to say no. We have to have cuts. And we have to stop spending. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call. All right, thank you for your comments this evening. Appreciate it. Let's uh, get back to the uh, agenda. we still got some ground to cover. Uh, we left off, uh, we dealt with the consensus folder, so now we're down to the draft ordinance. 4C, yep, draft ordinance. Enclosed uh, in your packet here at 4C, you have draft ordinance regarding um, no standing, stopping parking yep. on Mountain Road between Old Cross and South Main Street. If that language is acceptable to the board, then we can move forward and advertise <coughs> public hearings on this. I had a question. Yes. Yeah, and it's a uh, question for the chief. Under the waivers, uh, in there, it only said that the ordinance um, selectman could uh, waive it um, for emergencies. Um I just had a concern that if there was a special event that was over there, that would not constitute an emergency. And that was uh, one of the issues that we had to deal with on Worthley Hill Road when we dealt with the parking on Worthley Hill Road. Because if there was a re- if there was an event, um, and one of the residences needed additional parking besides what was permissible on their in their driveway, that it could be waived for like a, a family situation. And I, I just wanted to bring that up. I didn't know if you intentionally had it worded this way and left any other provision. So there's no, outside of an emergency, there's no way it can be waived. That's, our, concern, our concern was the amount of traffic going through that intersection. Okay. Um, Stop sign intersection and control that way. Um, so it was a concern. Um, the concern we had were emergencies, police vehicles, right. fire vehicles, highway okay. vehicles, and then public service, okay. things like that. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to um, bring this ordinance to public hearing with the following correction. Under enforcing authority, A. The Department of Public Works shall post an authorized no parking, stopping, or standing sign in the appropriate location Mm -hmm. along Mountain Road. Right. So it's consistent. (laughs) Correct. Is that the only one, Vic? That's the only one. Okay. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further further discussion or corrections or changes to the ordinance as proposed? Seeing none, all those in, fo- in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 500. Uh, the public hearings for this ordinance will be held on October 21st and November 4th.
just for public's information. Thank you. And next. That's all I had. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I'm going to shift the agenda around a little and ask Carl to come forward and talk about the uh, access road for the Colbert project. And then we'll go back to the second like, discussion if that's all right with the that's fine. board members. Let's skip it ahead. We'll do it all. Good evening. Good evening, Carl. Carl. Um, the contractor on this project finally got back to us with an estimate uh, just to refresh the board. We had two phases to the project. There was the culvert rehab, but then there was also the option of constructing the access roads to get down to the site. Um, we had a $120,000 budget for the project. The combined bid for both options was um, just around 135, so it was uh, over budget. Uh, the suggestion was made here uh, when the board awarded the contract to rehab the culvert to approach the contractor to see if we provide the gravels, what kind of savings we could achieve uh, working with the contractor. Uh, we have finally gotten that back from him. He's hoping to start uh, in the next couple of weeks. And the number he got back to us was at $8,500 savings if, um, if we provide the material. Now, there's a caveat with that. Um, to move the kind of material to this site as quickly as he's going to want to build these roads, We'd literally have to shut down our operation for like three days, four days with our small trucks. What I recommend instead, uh, and it really isn't pertinent to this motion, uh, but you know we would rent or uh, hire trailer dumps that could much more efficiently <laughs> move the material, because uh, we're talking five or six hundred yards of material, I think, to to do these roads. So the cost for a day, day and a half with the right kind of trucks, about twenty-five hundred to three thousand um, dollars. So the savings would be more like around five thousand. But I think it would effectively not slow the contractor down, and it would still save five thousand dollars. Just a quick question: I thought he was going to put the road in anyway with his own trucks. Was that not the? Yeah, he, w he wouldn't bring trucks down from Maine if... No, but I thought that was, if he took the bid, that would what he was going to do. Right. So that's really not going to save us much if we got a truck to dirt over there. If he was going to bring his own trucks down and truck to dirt anyway, he should just keep it on. Well, I don't know if he was going to truck or hire somebody like Bolton to... No, I, yeah, uh, I, I get that, side, but if that's part of his deal and let him hire the trucks, we shouldn't. If we're going to give him the gravel, he should move the material himself. I think. I mean, it's not that far. Uh, that, so that was not the 8500. The 8500 involved delivery to site. This access road going to stay in place once the job's done? <clears throat> Are they take it yeah, out? some of it, the, the road will stay in place. Uh, what we've talked to the county about is uh, like where it crosses the field mm -hmm. in the spring, we would put a, a little bit of loam over it. You know, the gravel would still be there, but just so that some vegetation would be so there. I guess my follow-up question would be, do we have the volume of material at yes. hand and it won't put our operations at risk or at all by using it for that no. purpose? No, we, we have the material. So the revised price uh, for him to construct the road is 26549 if we supply the material. Uh, how long a road are we building? There's actually two roads. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact lengths. Um, I mean, a thousand feet, five hundred feet. Oh, it's, it's. I would say all of a thousand feet down back. That's a pretty s significant cross slope, right? Yeah, and then yeah. the one down the front is very, very steep. Bless you. you, got, you got, just kind of just a fun follow up. Does, is he comfortable using our material? He's comfortable with meat specs and he has no problem with using it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, no, I was just. What are we, 600 yards is all he's moving? Yeah. 600 yards, give or take? That's his estimate. And it's going to take him, and he's going to charge us $26,000 to put 600 yards down? Well, he's also got to do tree removal, grading. Oh, yeah, I, I got some of that. But he's got to shim up the road that's there and then construct the road down into the steep slope. 
So that was his bid price. <clears throat> we figured it out on our, you know, for us to do it, and we came up with about 22000 would cost us to do it. Now, we're only going from our pit to the Hillsborough County home, correct? Correct. It's only, if you just use using a 10 wheel, it's only 40 loads of dirt. I mean, you could move 40 loads over there. Uh, two trucks in their sleep would do that. Oh. I mean, it wouldn't take them 15 minutes around. Uh, it takes a little more than that. Uh, they'd have to be backing up. It depends on I mean, fast. if they, yeah. Yeah, they're still going to place it. How fast machine Place it, impact it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, boy, it's kind of rich. Seems kind of rich to me, but, you know, whatever. Any questions from the board? Sure. What's the value of the 600 y or yards of gravel? Depends how you assess value. If, uh, at a well, not for us, but I'm saying if he was going out to purchase it. What well, would he if he be? was, in fact, buying it from a commercial pit, you, you're probably looking at 12 or $13 a yard anyway. Would, would he be going to Pike? Go any place where he wants to go, I suppose. There's several places he could get that material. So the recommendation is to modify the contract? To award in the amount of 26500 and then we'll see what we can do to hire trucks to effectively keep up with whatever operation he's going to have to build. Okay. So mending them up 26549 so. Yeah. <laughs> what is the total project then yeah, come out to? Total? Uh, that would bring the total project to uh, just a whisker over 125. And we Actually, budgeted I'm sorry, 126. And what did we budget? We had 120 26. budgeted. I'm doing the math in my head. I should tell you the the original price was 99,509. So plus 26, 549. So it's probably 127 ish. Or 126 ish. <clears throat> Twenty-six, fifty-eight dollars. Is that what you got? And you got that in your budget? To well, I'll have to come out of reclamation line or something. So the one twenty is in the budget. Right? Yes. That was yeah, the special article. Yeah, and then the, additional, the base, additional numbers, yeah. yeah. Six thousand fifty-eight would just come out of your operating budget. <clears throat> right. <laughs> Questions. As would the rental of Garland. the trucks we need. And the only other option would be spending, what would it, what was it without this option? 85. Uh, uh, well, his bid price was 35049 without this option. Or we shut down everything we're doing and spend twenty two or 23000 in risk, take more of a risk that we won't get out of some road done. Any other questions for Carl? If not, you need to entertain a motion to amend the contract per Carl's recommendation. Was the total 126 what? 126 change. $58. <coughs> 26058. I'll make the motion we amend the Director of Public Works uh, amendment to 126 5 and change. A second on the motion? And a motion and a second. Discussion on the motion to amend the contract to 126.058. None? Anybody's case open there? Please. All right. Take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 500. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. When's the start date, Carl? Uh, September or mid October. Okay. Exactly. All right. All right. Selectman's discussion. Committee reports. Looks like the only one we have is from the EDC. Yeah, do you have a report EDC. from them? We do? Oh, that's right. Yeah. I had the EDC. Yes. Um, there was some discussion about the potential sign locations 
welcome to Goffstown. Uh, they want to move. We're talking about 114 Bedford Line. Not necessarily putting it there, but bringing it up the road a little further where it was more. The Bedford Line is right there at the power line, and they'd like to bring it more ahead, maybe towards Sandy's Drive, so it's more visible. More people will be slowing down. Let's go there because they're stopping at the light if they're not blowing through the light, uh, and be more more uh, more of a safe location for for vandalism. To keep it. If they're going to build some of these signs, and they're talking about maybe trying to get raise money through donations from businesses, because they got some approvals from the state. wasn't a big deal. They're going to let them put them up if we can get the signs put up. Uh, some talk about the certified site regulations, recommendations to the planning board, uh, and the rezoning of the Pond View Industrial Park on the back road. And that passed, and they're going to run that into the planning board. Uh, Tim Redman. And Derek are going to bring that to them. Uh, no, that was not. That was for the site specifics. I'm sorry. And the planning board meeting that will be on 10:24. So I'm going to try and bring that to them. That was a pretty short meeting. Yeah. So rezoning will go on the ballot in March. Yeah. Is that their goal? Yeah. Try yeah. and get it to go there. Now, question on the uh, signs. Um, I brought it up several times in the past, but I. Would be important that the the Rotary Club be contacted because the current ones that we have were paid for by the Rotary Club. Al Baines came to the board of selectmen mm -hmm. and presented that to the board. The board voted to approve the signs, and the understanding was that the Rotary Club would maintain them. Tom Sousa did make the signs for the Rotary Club. Um, and I just want to make sure because I brought this up several times. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that we don't. Uh, bring that give the wrong impression yeah. to people, okay? Um, and just make sure that all the interested parties are at least uh, work, working together. Okay, but it was Al Baines who, made, who presented that to the Board of Selectmen. You know, I'll, do, I'll talk to him when the next meeting is going to be in uh, <coughs> November, November 2nd, 4th, or was it? I but I will try and bring that to them. Uh, there was also consideration about keeping the signs within the zoning, whatever the ordinance were. They're gonna, not going to try and overstep the bounds, make a bigger sign, just going to keep it so that everybody's on the same page. If you've got a sign to say at the hardware store or the pharmacy movers got to sign, and they're all bound by these regulations. They're going to try and stay within that zone, which is only fair to everybody else in town. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that was pretty much a short meeting. Right. Thank you. Bill, you wanted to? Yep, I just wanted to give an update on uh, the statue monument at the roundabout. And we have hey. Muster Rock now. Nice. That's official. Okay. Uh, the uh, base, concrete base, and the and the uh, the rock are scheduled to be set tomorrow, and then I'll be making arrangements for the um, for the statue to be set on top of Muster Rock. And we're looking at a target is October 26 for dedication. Very nice. Right. Thank you. Set the statues and move over there, right? Right, right on top of that. So, thank you. Very nice. It's quite a piece of Yeah, it is. Um, are there any other committee reports? I don't have any on the agenda here. No. That's it. In the old business, we had dates for budget workshops. We found out the dates of October 22nd and October 29th. We'll be working on some of them tonight. We've got the CIP Parks and Rec and Library on the agenda for tonight. Um, are those dates still looking good for folks with the budget workshops? And we had talked about starting at 6, ordering out pizza and bringing it in, sort of have a working supper kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what are the, There were three dates. The first date didn't work. It's the second two dates. Am I yeah. correct? Yes. They're both Tuesdays. I have them written on my 22nd. 29th. 29th and 30th. They're both Tuesdays. That's right. Wait a minute, I'm hearing three dates, 22nd? There are three dates, yes. 22nd, 29th, 29th and 30th. 
Okay. I don't know which ones Various you want and stuff. how many you want. I okay. mean, those are the okay. three well, dates. Right. Let's, let's set them aside on our calendars and mm -hmm. see how far we get on the 22nd right. and 29th. So right. See how much we need on the And we'll just use the 30th as, as a backup. Yeah. Okay. But mark them out on your calendars. Just yep. so set aside. Six o'clock. Yep. Yep. Start at six. Take up a collection of pizza. That's what folks want to do. We'll make a mess of the place. <laughs> um, any other old business? Any new business? Uh, seeing none, I guess we'll get to the. You know, I suggest we take maybe a ten-minute break before we get into the budget deliberations. Okay. If that's that's okay with folks, yeah. and we'll come back at. Uh, Sounds good to me. Good evening. We're back from uh, a brief recess. This is the October 7, 2013 Goffstown Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, we're at the agenda now. Portion of the agenda where we're going to start taking up our 2014 budget deliberations. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss the CIP budget as well as the Parks and Rec and the library budgets. How would the board like to approach these? I've heard CIP first. Mr. Chair, I'd like CIP first. Go CIP first. Is that the Okay, then we'll do just that then. Yes. If maybe if the town administrator can go over, you sent yes. us some tools today, some summaries, and okay. kind of put a perspective yeah, give us the, on the latest version of what we should be looking at. Make sure we're all looking at the right. Uh, well, I sent you an Excel spreadsheet because of the town budget because like when um, Capsano had requested that so that we could uh, adjust that yep. as we go along. So I sent that. At the same time, before I sent it, I updated the year to dates to 9-30-13. So the only difference between basically the Excel spreadsheet and what's in your books now is you have more information on year to dates. Okay? Um, the other item that I had emailed to all of you, last week we had discussed options. Um, and to use all the tools in your toolbox to arrive at a budget. And we had discussed fund balance. So I had, I emailed this to you earlier. I think I have five copies here. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, at the bottom, it has what uh, our unassigned fund balance was as of the end of 2012. But then remember, we voted the use of some of that at the March 2000. 13 town meeting. So available at this time is a, approximately 4.8 million. Now, typically at year end, we add surplus to that number. Uh, we don't know what that will be yet, so that's why we have a question mark there. So, given that, um, you could, uh, and still have a healthy fund balance, you could use $863,408 and still have a $4 million plus fund balance. So a healthy balance. And yes. And it's well, recommended by... And that's above the 8%. So that's available. Um, we also talked about uh, vehicle loans. Uh, and the finance director did call around to see what the uh, government rate was to take a note on vehicles. Uh, and if you're borrowing $1 million for five years, the rate they gave him was 3.25%. He also got a, a schedule for seven years, still 3.25%. How much money? On a million. So basically, if you took a million out for five years, your payment, annual payment, would be $216,960. What you'd be paying over the term, the five-year term in interest, is $84,800. $84,800. correct. <clears throat> A seven-year note, your payments would go down to $159,915, and your interest over seven years would be $119,407. So I, I thought you should have that information as you go forward here with CIP. Okay. 
Okay, well that is background. Where would folks like to be dive into the CIP matrix? Well, if we could, Mr. Sure. Chair, also, you had, Sue, you had the tax rate estimator on the, um, the budget summary. That would be the third tab on the sheet I sent to you. Mm -hmm. So if I, yeah, read, if I read that correctly, that currently you have appropriation adopted, and that would be for everything that's currently in the budget. Including the fire station bond, the special articles that appeared on the uh, appropriation summary. Right. And then you have the revenue, so that's 28,300,890. Right. Revenue, which includes bond proceeds, 11,574,621. Correct. Estimated use of fund balance, you estimated 500,000. Yes. You have your war service credits, your overlay, MS1 valuation. Now, <clears throat> I might have take that you're, you're doing it, your MS1 valuation is assuming there's a 1% increase? A half percent. Half percent, I'm sorry, a half percent? Yes. And it went down this year? It went down this year only because we had a statistical revaluation okay. of the town. Okay. And then the net appropriation would be 16675019 which would be a town side tax rate of $12.59. So I'm assuming that 1259 is an increase over the 972 that we just that, estimated right. for. The 972 <coughs> is the estimated tax rate for this year, 2013 tax rate. And this 1259 is the estimated based upon this these preliminary numbers. Understood. Right, that's that's all I'm trying to get a handle yeah. on. So in order to keep a level rate, the net appropriation needs to be around $13 million. Yes. So we're, so we're three and a half million up high. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I ain't gonna work in my book. comes down to prioritizing items. Mm -hmm. um, I think the board had already discussed uh, under CIP the master plan and putting that out for a year. I thought, I thought we did. And, and I know we were in formal deliberations, but um, during my presentation, I, I think I said, considering the what's going on, I think we need time to establish a process and, and make have discussions next year about the process we want to use yeah, well, I to thought develop I, the master I plan. thought it was pretty clear in the minutes. Right. Well, yes. right. So if, if those of you who are following along with the Excel spreadsheet, you could probably just put a zero in the selectments column on that line. That's the last line. We're, I'm sorry. We're, we're so on the CIP yep. tab. Yep. The very last line, uh, planning master plan. Yep. So we're at a $9.39 townside tax rate in 2012. And this is 12.59, so that's an increase of. Uh, well, this year will be 972. 972. Yes, 2013 tax rate. Increase of two dollars. Which I had already. I also sent you an email on that. You probably. Yep. 
We we have been uh, told that the tax rates will be set on starting October 22nd. Yeah. Yeah, later <laughs> than usual. We like to get our tax bills out by the so end of the it's month. Still so not, it's still not a certainty, right? Well. 280. $2.80, give or take. Yeah. So. Also, so could you share with us the information, the very rough preliminary information you received about insurance? Insurance, uh, health insurance rates have not been set yet, but they did have a public hearing on it and, and gave some information out. Um, I did follow up and found out that our uh, insurance rates are going to be double digit in increases, uh, anywhere from 13 to 16 percent increase. Not good news. Mm -mm. 13 percent? 13 to 16 percent in that well, range. Maybe we have to take in uh, employees. Maybe we should start picking up more of the slack in that. If it's going to jump that much, that's a lot. They're not paying. Uh, what's the employee? What are the employees' contribution, contribution now? I don't know. What, is, what does it say? Uh, it's a formula that. I mean, just rough numbers. Is it 10 percent, 5 percent, 15, 20? Um, employees, well, the employer contributes 90 percent of the average between the health plans offered. Maybe we should drop that to like 60 or something like that. We could pick up some of the slack there. That's, that's a lot of money. So do you have a ballpark figure of what we, what the total insurance costs for the town is? About $2 million. Between two hundred and sixty to three hundred and twenty thousand increase. Yep. That's fine. Right. Now remember at least half our employees are unionized, so that will have to be a discussion in a non meeting regarding any changes to that. Or actually just about any discussion on it should be. Yes. So about two million total. Right now, ten percent is the employee contribution on average. <laughs> per unit. Sorry. Yeah, it, and, and like I said, it depends. You yeah. know, that's the average, but just round numbers. I mean, it's ten percent as opposed to thirty, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. I think the um, Kaiser Foundation did a study, and they found that the average nationally is, um, and this is private and public sector, they, that the um, average nationally is 80% for employers. When was that done, just recently? Uh, no, I haven't seen the recent one. That was last year. Well, certainly it wouldn't be outrageous for us to trend that way. I we can go down to 40%. Well, we're saying 200, we're, saying we're paying, the, the employees are paying around $200,000 if we're at $2 million, give or take. Yes. Or is that our cost, $2 million? No, that's No, $2 million, um, is, is our, our cost. cost. That's the 90%. That's the 90%. If we went to 25%, just, I mean, that's not asking a whole lot. That's not 15%, I know it is. But that would save us about $300,000 right to bat. So it's going to go up, you say it's going to go up how much? 13, do you think it's going to um, It's going up uh, 13 to 16 percent. So, I mean, that would just be almost an offset is all it would be. We wouldn't really gain anything. It would just be a wash. Close. Well, I think it's certainly one thing that we need to look at. Yes. And you don't and have if you want to stay for a non-meeting after yeah, this to discuss we, it. Yeah. I, we don't have the concrete numbers yet, so it's no. still going to be. Right. Right. Kind of back and forth a little bit, but we right. can get a sort of a, a sense. We've got a sense of where it's at. Yep. Okay. Well, so we've identified that issue. Folks, folks are comfortable with that? Okay. Uh, 
What else should we really call that? Mm. Request. Yes. Would it be possible as we move forward, and it doesn't have to be maybe every two weeks or a month, and we do this in the city, the department heads provide a projected budget surplus? And it, it just it, funny it's you ask that. I was talking to uh, Don today about that. That mm -hmm. t typically finance gets those numbers to us. Do we want to look at your CIP? Well, one of the things we can look at is the uh, rooftop units for the police department. Uh, hotline is page nine. Uh, nine uh, wait a minute. It is what, 161. Line 161? Yeah. Oh, in capital uh, improvements? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, It'll be your fourth page. About your fourth page in. That's twenty six thousand two hundred and one dollars? Yeah. I had been uh discussing the CIP with the chief and uh, he met with Dave Roberge and they um, did a little bit more investigation on this a little further and uh, apparently the uh, replacement units which are York the newest I ones um, they're some issues with them, and it might be related to the um, the type of freon that's in the units. And um, since they're newer, a newer design, and uh, the suggestion is to uh, try to wait for the bugs to be worked out of it before they're replaced, and add some money into the maintenance into the uh, the maintenance line. Uh, to cover a, uh, condi a, a, co a condenser, compressor, or uh, some patchwork. Um, it wouldn't be the total amount. I mean, we'd be, make, we'd be having a savings in the CIP, but we'd have to add something into maintenance, maintenance of about $7,500 into maintenance. So, so we'd take 26201 right out of the twenty. Well, yeah, yeah, but don't forget, you yeah, have to put the maintenance. Well, I understand, but yeah. I'm talking about as far as CIP, the CIP right. matrix. Right. Right. Yes. We talked about using fund balance um, for certain items in CIP, and mm -hmm. I look at vehicles, and we replace vehicles every year, so I don't think it makes sense to use fund balance dollars for a reoccurring. But when I look at things like server virtualization, the ADA lift, the exterior repairs at the mm -hmm. library, the rooftop units, those are items that occur one time and mm -hmm. typically there's multiple many years before something like that has to be done again so those are the, the the items that I could see taking fund balance dollars out to get them done because we can push those off but the conditions aren't going to improve um, you know I understand the freon but you know the chief did say they were in bad shape it's oh, they, be, they are going to be replaced them today replace them tomorrow You know, so. So your suggestion would be fund balance. Utilize fund balance for the rooftop HVAC units, and what would you mention? Two others, I think. The, the search server, server virtualization, virtualization, the ADA lift, yeah. the exterior repair of the library, and the rooftop units. The 
Barnard striking. Park is coming out of. And we're going to strike the 140 out of the impact, impact fees. Right. So on page four, we're, we're scrapping the 140, and we're looking at 33,300 for the lift, 35,000 for the library exterior, 26,201 for the HVAC units, and 75,000 for the uh, server virtualization. So that's one hundred and seventy-six thousand two hundred and one dollars. So you would, we're including the we're including the server virtualization. Well, those four items, and then one forty for the uh, master plan. I, I didn't include that. That's okay. already zeroed out. So you would be. So those those would actually stay in CIP. We would just add one hundred and seventy-six two hundred one on the revenue no, side. No, they, they would go to special articles. Special yeah. articles, right? They would just come right out. Okay. But we're, but we're including the server virtualization, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's a suggestion. I don't know. If, well, everyone wants to do that. Um, and wasn't the other one that you wanted to do a use of fund balance was the um, including a dam construction piece? Mm-hmm. Correct, but that's act. It, it is fund balance, but it's actually the money that we just received from LGC. But we're letting that it's going to go into so correct. You still have to but, vote it. But for fund that, that's not included in the fund balance that you gave us tonight. No, no, it is not. That right. will be part of your surplus. So instead of right. the eight hundred thousand, it would be nine plus. I thought we I thought we were planning to take something out of it. Wasn't there something we discussed? On Canunic Dam construction. Right. Right, design money or something? Yeah, we the talked about The design was done out of this year's budget. Right. But the construction would come out of uh, a, a vote from surplus next year. Right, that's what we talked about. And I right. thought Which is that where the LGC we, right. settlement goes into. Right, right. So exactly. So it's just a step to get it there. Correct. Yes. So where is that in, I'm going to, damn, 140000 is that... That's in later on. No, nope, that's in CIP at the top here. Right, that's under public works. Right. Well, it's under land and improvements. I'm going by the budget, not the CIP matrix right now. So did you want to, if we're uh, identifying the items that are going to be voted from surplus, can we do that all at once? Because if we add the 140 for, and I know that was prior discussion, add the 140,000 for the Anacanonic Dam. Now there's five lines that are identified for use of fund down, so that's $316,201. What is that total? 316,201 for those five lines. Only 176 out of the fund balance. So I thought we could. So, what was the LGC amount? Do you remember? About 182,000. Sixty-three thousand in the fund balance that we thought we could consider. Mm -hmm. How much? Eight hundred sixty-three thousand. Right, that didn't include the one eighty-two. Right, right. It's one million forty-five thousand four hundred and eight. But, but not the entire amount though, because we need to leave a minimum in there. No, that that's in excess of the four million. That would leave four million. 
which maintains at least a, an 8% balance. Can you say the number, wasn't it? 1,045,408. One. One yeah. So my question would be, are there other projects in here that would be appropriate to tap some more of the unreserved fund balance? Like the um, Town Hall Revenue Collection Office at 109.860. That was pushed out. That was pushed, pushed out. out. Oh. Where? oh, there it is. Moved out. Yeah, sorry. If I, if I could, Mr. Yep. Chair, there are three um, public works projects. There's the Pleasant Street Bridge replacement. Reconstruction of Maple Ave and Tyler Drive retention detention ponds and the new Boston Road bridge deck replacement. That I would assume once done good. wouldn't be done again for the bridge deck's been done, right? Yeah. The bridge deck is done. The <coughs> yeah, bridge deck has already been done. So that we could take that out? Yeah. The bridge deck, bridge deck one. New well, Boston yeah, Road. Six thousand. Six thousand. No. What's the line Eight, number? Eighty thousand. Or the or the 14, Pleasant 14, Street Bridge replacement. 14, which, bottom page five. Just to be clear, that's that's the other bridge uh, further out that is also in our operating budget under bridge repairs. Uh, that money is included there. So this the year's or next year's? Next year. The, the other bridge that's actually on New Boston Road is further out. How about Leo Lake? Also needs but if we fund it through. <laughs> The unreserved fund balance, we could reduce. Different bridge. It's the second bridge out beyond. Uh, well, I guess the 80,000 that's in CIP right now, what is that for? That's for the sidewalk that's on the bridge we did this year. That's for the sidewalk. Bridge we did this year, which is Pleasant Street. Right, because you have to replace the structure and. On that, I remember you said that. So you're saying the six thousand dollars in New Boston Road bridge deck is in CIP and also in your operating budget? Yeah, I don't know where it came from in CIP. That should not have been in CIP. Okay. We we gave uh, we that gave Brian the engineering report. Yeah. There were some maintenance you know, maintenance items mm -hmm. and then larger capital items. So I think there was a misunderstanding with maintenance items. So, oh, okay. So, so we'll 9, just remove that. The, two, the six thousand comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since that was an error, I'll just delete that whole line. Yep. Okay. Just make a note so we'll know that the line numbers. Are I don't even see it in here. So we're at the bottom of page Which five. Two fourteen and page five. five. No, no, no. On the spreadsheet. Oh. Uh, on the are you the electronic budget. Yeah, the six thousand. Yeah, it's under lands and improvements. It's mm -hmm. the last item. And it won't have the same number because six thousand dollars. Line um, last five digits. Thirty six. Four five zero oh, three zero. Oh. <coughs> it's um, the Excel okay. spreadsheet line is 10. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you.
What's this line 313? School. That's a school budget. Okay, Yeah, that's the high school. Yeah. So jump out of that coach. For fund balance? Yeah. For use of fund balance, folks can see in the matrix, the AP matrix. So I'm seeing seven lines to use for fund balance, three seven public lines. works projects, uh, Uncommitted Dam, Pleasant Street Bridge, Sidewalk, Detention Ponds, Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Then I see three building projects uh, the ADA lift at Town Hall, mm -hmm. Library yep. Painting and Repair, and Police Department Rooftop, HVAC. And then um, the IT server virtualization at police department. Those seven total four hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred and one dollars. Then yes, does it? Which way? The <laughs> How much does that leave us with the difference on the fund balance? Uh, about four hundred thousand, give or take. It depends which number you're using. Are you oh, using eight hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred eight yep. plus one hundred eighty two thousand? We were discussing. It I would say that's because that's what's going to be in fund balance at the end of the year, that total. Because that's where it goes. And that was a $1.4 million total, right? <laughs> yeah. Because so if you had 1.4. My suggestion, we could use the balance of it to offset the taxes. And that would help with the budget. You mean a tax rate setting time next right. year? Is that, that's what is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it was the f you had, how much did you have on there to offset? Did you already have that in your tax rate estimate? 500000 Is that include, is that already counted for in the balance that you gave us? The 863000 No. no. So you're there. Basically, because you're going to use five. If you use five hundred thousand to offset the tax rate, and you're using four sixty nine two hundred one, you're almost there at the one point. You'll have seventy six thousand change plus whatever the surplus is. Mm -hmm. But it's only reduced that three hundred three million seven hundred and seventy five thousand. By four hundred thousand. <laughs> to start, because we've already <laughs> we've already estimated using the five hundred thousand in a fund balance. That's true. Quick question for 
the mm. chief, fire chief, the police chief. Chief, on, on the CIP, I see two, car five and car three. Um, I'm sorry, car three and looks like 18. And they're listed as SRO. Correct. And so when you say, how many SRO officers do we have? I have one SRO. He goes between main, he goes between all the schools. He's not just at the high school. Um, he often transports prisoners or people arrest. <coughs> Okay, and so the two vehicles, because they're showing both as SRO. That, that's what was my question. There's a 2006 Crown Vic that says SRO, and then there's a 2010 Crown Vic that says SRO. 2010 is the SRO. 2006, I don't even see on my matrix. So that yeah, I don't see a 2006. Yeah, it's on line nine. It's on line nine. VIN number 144-853. Oh, okay. 206 Crown Vic, 186,000 miles. FA number 333. <clears throat> Old number 18. All right. Right. I don't have a 2006. Well, may, uh, there's another department using it? Very possible. Um, so, okay, so that clarifies that. My, my other question would be, would it be possible to take your lowest, it's, you have three vehicles for replacement, take your lowest vehicle, your 78,000 mile vehicle number 10, mm -hmm. give it to the SRO, have the SRO's vehicle go to patrol because it only has 59,000 miles on it and replace two vehicles instead of three this year. I have my vehicle mileage up to date on the 17th of September. It now is 61,000 miles. Um, and that will probably be cycled into detectives because of the cost of the changeovers. Mm -hmm. We're not replacing any detective vehicles, though. No, but it, when we replace a vehicle, we replace line vehicles. And we ship them back into detectives, support services, command <coughs> vehicles. Okay. I'm not following that. Why couldn't you still do that? Currently, I'm looking to replace the captain's vehicle, the 2010 Crown Vic, with 88,000 miles. I have the K9 with 88,000 miles, and then the supervisors with 84,000 miles, and that 84,000 will be much higher by the end of the year. That's a 24-7 car. Um, those are the three cars that I would look to replace. Um, again, those would be replaced by vehicles coming off the front line and moved into those with the exception of the K9 car and the supervisor car. You'd be replacing two line vehicles, and then one would be shifted back. Um, okay, because that's that's what's confusing here is you're not you're showing replacement for the K9 patrol and the sergeant and a patrol, but I understand what you're doing is you're going to take these vehicles and actually replace the high miles. The high miles. Right. But I think it would be clearer if you showed that those are the vehicles being replaced, and then how you shuffle them afterwards would be, you know, what you do. But because the, prob the problem being is in March or May when we start this process, I will tell you that the supervisor's car is much lower than the other vehicles. So we're trying to make estimate estimations on the mileage. Um, as I said, the supervisor's car runs 24/7. I have a supervisor on, he's, they're running it continuously, so the miles are going to be bounced up quicker. So back in May, it was difficult to think this far out, but we're trying to, we try to do the high miles unless we have a Rex or something of that sort that would dictate otherwise. Thank you.
Chief, if we took one car away and gave you two and let you make your own decision on would that make it any worse or better? Currently, we're seeing higher expenditures on repair lines. Okay. Um, they're killing us as far as repairing them. Okay. Um, we've gone two years now with two, two vehicles per year. Um, I'm afraid that we'll be uh, playing serious catch up um, in the following years. Um, okay. <coughs> Very well answered. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to hear that same argument from the DPW. Oh, everybody. Everybody. Quick question. Yeah. yeah. So, Chief, uh, how much are we spending on maintenance roughly on a vehicle? I mean, if you, if you haven't got only, we don't have a vehicle here with over 100,000 miles on it, so I'm just curious, what are we spending on maintenance? Do you have any idea what, roughly what it would be? I mean, is it 20? You know? I haven't broken it down per vehicle. I, mean, I can get those costs per vehicle on average. Um, I can't remember off the top of talking a couple thousand dollars a year or? You know, five thousand dollars, or I mean, I know you get the regular maintenance of tires and wear and tear, but I mean, is there any major? Well, year to date on maintenance, now you got eighteen thousand two sixty-two spent. All the vehicles for the, for the department. Well, that's not too bad. That's not like how many vehicles we got? Twenty some odd. That's less than a thousand dollars a vehicle, right? Nineteen vehicles. Yeah, it costs you that much just to change your oil nowadays, almost. Oil and tires would cover that. That'd be that'd be your maintenance, really. Oil and tires are thousand dollars easy on a vehicle that's running those reasonable. Are supply, those are bought under supplies, not maintenance. Well, okay. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out what what is the maintenance that we're we're talking oil changes. Or are we talking yes. just we, we've done everything from yep. oil changes to tra we did two transmissions on two year old vehicles this year. Yep. Um, we've done uh, minor repairs. Uh, Accidents that don't reach the uh, threshold, things of that sort. So um, we work very hard to keep them up. But well, that line's in your budget, right? I mean, more or less. That line is in your budget. The maintenance. Yes, that's what we've expended so far this year. What'd you say, it was Nick? It's um, he was he's but he's over budget. It's Seventeen thousand one hundred this year. He spent eighteen thousand two sixty two. He's budgeted for 20000 yeah. next year. Make a suggestion to move one vehicle out and add $2,000 to the maintenance yeah. line to bring it to 22000 even at that, that's not bad. You're spending just under a thousand dollars a vehicle. Move one of the vehicles out and increase the maintenance line okay. for what's left on the fleet. Yeah. Uh, with police vehicles, it's difficult too to go by mileage because the vehicles run. All there's no mileage put in on them because the vehicles idle. are not turned off because of the equipment, and especially if they have a, a canine in the car. So there's other equipment that they run, so the mileage is not always indicative. No, no I understand that. We're only looking at eight hundred dollars per vehicle, even with the today's budget line they spent for repairs. You know, we got seven hundred ninety-four dollars per vehicle. That's cheap money to run a vehicle per year just to maintain it. Uh, just, just where I'm at. I mean, that's not a lot of money. Well, to, I think to be fair too, you yeah. you got the radar trailer, which really doesn't have much right. maintenance. No, 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 the box no. truck probably hasn't been used; doesn't no. get used very often. Well, if you just use even use twenty vehicles, brand new vehicle coming for that one, Nick. But no, I understand. Could, right, the maintenance will go down on that. And we should have a lot of warranty stuff on that one as well. Just, just keep in mind though, when a police vehicle is down, it's a vehicle that's not on the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chief, when you purchase these new vehicles, can you put hour meters in them? Is that an option that we have on those vehicles? I believe it's an option. I also, as I understand it, I went to a briefing the other day that with the new computer-based software that are coming out now, we did a protraction, I believe, on my cell phone, from what I'm understanding, miles, how fast they go, et cetera. So that's what the news for the brand.
I go with what I started with. Take one car away, let him make the changes, whatever he wants to take away, and I like Nick's idea. Add two thousand dollars to the to his repair line. So knock thirty six one oh three out of the CIP. Which one which line is that? Well, let them pick it. Oh, so all right, yeah. Pick whichever one. They're, they're all thirty. They're all the same, so yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fair with that. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. And up to up to the other repair for a couple of grand more if you want. Then increase the maintenance line. So the fleet maintenance line goes from twenty thousand to twenty-two thousand in the operating budget. Mm-hmm. And the new amount in CIP is seventy two thousand two oh six. Seventy two two oh six. That's what I have. Chief, are we done um, outfitting the new vehicle uh, the two new vehicles this year? That you got? Because at the end of um, September I'm showing sixty two one seventy seven for the two. Nothing else to add on to that? Okay. That would be this year's CIP line for the vehicles? Yes. Could you say that amount again? It's um, on that spreadsheet. It's, uh, we budgeted 70102 and we've used oh, 62177 He'll check and make sure they're fully changed over. Getting back to your original question of what will we have for a surplus? Question for the fire chief. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Chief, any chances of any grants for any of your vehicles? Good evening. Good evening. I want to come up here so you can so you can, everybody can hear me. Um, I just attended one of the, uh, the the assistance to firefighters grant program seminar regarding to the latest guidance uh, on the uh, on the FEMA grants that that we've been successful in in the past. And a couple of things is every year the 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 priorities are adjusted slightly, and it's to it's to mimic what what is deemed important to FEMA and and the folks down in Washington what they'd like to see. Uh, the millions of dollars spent on every year. Vehicles is probably not one of them. Um, they still award award uh, funds to vehicles, but they make a point to say that not more than 20, 25 percent of the entire grant total amount goes towards vehicles. And uh, they break it down even further to say to say, okay, the uh, there's certain types of vehicles that that are are listed as a priority for types of communities. And they list us as a rural community because um, of our of our population in our land area. So for a lower com rural community, they they still say, okay, a pumper is a priority vehicle, and a wildland 
vehicle is a priority vehicle for so, someone like us. Then you look at it a little further is when they make the determination uh, on who would get awarded in this competitive bit, uh, grant process is the fact that they look at the, the oldest uh, age of that particular type of vehicle in that fleet and then ultimately and what's probably hurt us in the past we, we tried to attempt to get a grant for either an engine or a new forestry vehicle is the the average age of the fleet uh, the, of our department and unless just talking with the FEMA folks uh, unless our average age of our entire fleet is greater than 20 years it's very unlikely that we would get awarded a grant at this point um, because the priority is really not on vehicles. It's on protective clothing, um, uh, the air packs that, that the firefighters wear on their backs and so on and training. So uh, unfortunately, we, we, we kind of caught the, the wind at the right time to get our ladder trucks replaced with a new tower ladder, but unfortunately we're probably not going to be successful if we try to, try to go for another vehicle. I think they said they get about 4,000 applications and fund maybe a couple hundred. Exactly. exactly. Nationwide. It's a very, very competitive. What's the average age of our fleet? Right now it's about uh, 13, 13 years old. Yeah, and the oldest ones we got are 2,000 or something like that, or 1989. Well, we have 299s, and we have a 1994, our, our oldest ones. Yeah. And, of course, if you want the to forestry count, helps. count the forestry <laughs> helps, and if we threw in the old Seagrave, that would really help. But, you know, we don't do that. <laughs> The DA tech. So, in other words, no. <laughs> I wouldn't catch any better on that one. Okay. Thank you. Chief, what kind of vehicle at $130,000 buy us? What that vehicle is 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 uh, switching gears uh, again, uh, updating our fleet to to match our need, and that would be a uh, all seasons quick attack type vehicle versus just a forestry vehicle that would be used during 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 a uh, dry season. That's it. That vehicle will be used uh, around the year, uh, responding to uh, more of the simpler calls uh, that can be handled, or when we have inclement weather. When we just get a fire truck stuck in snow, uh, this this will be able to get right in there. It'll be a full drive vehicle, um, similar to like a commercial chassis, like a like a Ford or a Chevy or GM, um, and it'll be rigged up to to uh, be for heavy duty use. It also has a fire pump on it with a with a water tank, and I'll be cooking up and roll, roll on that. Uh, it'll be an NFPA 1906 compliant vehicle uh, for wildland fire use. And uh, it'll be a, have all the heavy duty uh, abilities at that point. <coughs> um, I know uh, Selectman Camposano asked me to get some more information in regards to uh, pricing on vehicles. Just getting a vehicle in, in a skid unit, and I just got those prices actually this afternoon. And uh, working with uh, one of the one of the vehicle dealers in Concord on state state bid. And if you're looking at a uh, just a regular cab cab and pickup uh, for a state bid right now, it's uh, thirty six thousand dollars for a very basic uh, skid unit. Uh, right now, we're, it's it's in the ballpark of thirteen thousand dollars, and I would just add in an, an allowance for emergency emergency vehicle upfit. What that is is putting emergency lighting on it, graphics to cost on fire on it, and putting a siren and radio installed into it. That's another ten thousand dollars. So just for the uh, cab in a skid unit, uh, it runs you about sixty thousand dollars. Bless you. Bless you. Um, another option would be to we call it a glider kit. And a glider kit is something where you buy the chassis, and then you get a um, manufactured truck bed, and you just bolt it on onto that chassis. It has uh, similar features, more cabinetry. That's what you're paying for in this particular case, more cabinetry, um, better distribution of weight, fire pump, hose reels. And uh, with that vehicle, with the glider kit, um, runs about $95,000 with the upfit for emergency vehicle lighting and so on. 
chief. You know what Chief Wiggins in Bedford paid for that forestry he, he received with the utility general utility body on the back of it? I don't recall. That was that was built in Hookset, I believe. And and that was a poly body, I believe. Yeah. And uh I I, I don't know what he paid for that. And he got that uh two or three years ago, I believe. <laughs> You know, I'm inclined to think when it comes to the fire, fire vehicles, this is where we ought to put some money. I mean, well, I, I the thing is so old to begin with, yeah. it isn't worth yeah. being part of the discussion. And also, when you look at the, cha the climate change that we're experiencing, yeah. I mean, the winters we're experiencing, the rainstorms that we're experiencing, the road washouts, even though they may not be town spread town-wide, they, they're isolated around town. Yeah. I think we need a vehicle yeah. like this that can get out there Most certainly. in all seasons, in all conditions and be a first response, first attack. Yeah. I mean, I know the reason why I asked the, the reason why I asked the chief of the, the Bedford uh, forestry, I mean, I think that would be a good area to head into, put a four-door cab, you know, put the all-wheel drive package under it. I mean, we have compartment, compartment space for the, you know, air packs and all the stuff that we need. Um, I mean, I just, I'm looking for avenues. I, I share the same concerns that you have, Mr. Chair, but um, I drive and work with that thing, and it's, I mean, how it amazes me to stay on the road now is, yeah. you know, it's just. It's, it's a safety issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, and I don't think, I think the heat, the heater is gone in it. We don't have any, you know, the heat, the, this winter, if we take it out, we'll be in condition with no heat in it. And the, the, you brought up, brought up a good point where, um, some of the driveways that we see in town um, have extreme approaches. And without a doubt, um, if there isn't a dry condition or a perfect condition, we're not making the driveway. We're not making it up that as far as we thought we well, could. With a vehicle like this, you can provide that first response. Right. At least get in there and provide some life saving. Right. And the, you're talking, like I said, it would have a fire pump on it. It has about a, a 250 <coughs> gallons of water on it. Um, so you can make a, make a quick attack. And uh, again, if it's a case where we just need to protect uh, the occupants from getting out, mm -hmm. that's what we'll do. Um, I'm just going to differ a little. I, I I think we definitely need to replace the forestry unit. We've got you know, we're a very rural community. We have large areas of um, conservation land, and you know we see with wind storms like this, we have a lot of a lot of material that can burn. And, and I think a 1968 Jeep has seen its day and it has it doesn't own us, own us a thing yeah um, I, I just sit, look at the economic reality and i would love to say yes let's upgrade and let's get an all season fast attack but you know i mean we have a very good public works department they do a good job clearing roads um, we run tires when we have uh, chain tire chains when we run uh, i mean we deal with a driveway that we can't get up you know we Exactly. So I, I would be supportive of reducing that to, say, $80,000 so that you'd have a budget to be able to get a four-wheel drive um, truck, forestry, skid, get equipment, get hose, um, well, that's right, get that. Right, because I'm hearing a smaller number than 130 from what the yeah. chief just mentioned. I heard two options, a, a 60000 yeah. option and a $95,000 right. option. Yeah, right. the, the 90, again, the 95 Get you the glider pack, or the the, the, the kit, glider, glider unit, kit. where it just it allows us to you know carry that extra equipment that we would typically need versus just throwing throwing on top of a truck. Yep. Um, and I would of the two, if we're going to go that option, I would recommend the, the glide the glider kit option, which is the ninety five. Ninety five. I'd, I'd, I'd go along with that. Yeah. So take the one thirty and make it ninety five. Mr. Chair, correct. Now, Sue, do we have to show the hundred and forty five thousand from the ambulance where it's coming out of that ambulance reserve fund? On the gross side, but not yet. You're paying. It's not appearing in CIP. It, it's appearing under the EMS budget. Okay. All right. I'm going to suggest we hold off on 
that. that that's my recommendation. I'll, I'll hold off on replacement of that vehicle. On the ambulance. We could probably put some maintenance in it and save it from. I mean, it's a spare, it's a spare run. It's a spare run. It's not a full time, right? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> And we're replacing well, another one. Been, again, years. initially when we when we when we uh, a year or so ago we we thought that it would its primary role would be as a reserve unit, and um, it's being used um, once or twice a week as a, as a primary response. Um, just just to advise the board that you know it is getting more use than we when we thought we would. Which one of these trust chiefs has got the frame is having a problem? Engine one. Engine one. Engine one. Can I go and look at that sometime next couple of days? I want to look at the frame on that because sure. maybe we can. Yeah, what you'll see is is an interesting um, patchwork that that. Um, oh yeah, I know. What, I know what's going to look like. I'm just curious as to why we can't maybe take and cut that out completely. And I want to take a look at it so I can see if we can maybe figure that out or something on it. Engine one is the one in here for five hundred and seventy five thousand to replace. Mm -hmm. re and squad one is it's one. replacing two trucks again. It's replacing squad one and right. engine one. Yeah. They're being combined. Yeah. Right. It's it's something that we've we have we have been striving to do is we we're thinking our fleet and with modern technology and, and the ability to uh, build trucks that have more than one purpose, uh, we're able to downsize our fleet overall. And here's an, we're gonna have another opportunity to do that. And uh, engine, engine one is recently, since the last time we met, uh, continues to give us some heartache with its fire pump. And so it's we've had to service it again to get the pump going again. And the pressure relief valve is still out of service, all right? Still out of service. That'll cost us about another $1,500 to get that repaired. If, Mr. Chair, if the mm -hmm. CIP seventy-five thousand goes in this year, you'll have one hundred and fifty thousand in CIP, correct? There's seventy-five that went in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. In the capital reserve fund. Yeah. What's? Wow, well, I can look for Don's email. But do you know the total amount in your capital reserve fund right now? I think there was like two thousand dollars remaining um, before another seventy-five thousand dollars was entered in again this year. Okay. Um, so if we get if we get that seventy five thousand this year, and I say if, it'll be roughly one hundred and fifty thousand in there, correct? Correct. So let's take the one hundred and fifty thousand and reduce it off the hundred uh, off the five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, whatever the price is. That's what the price will be. That so he'll be allowed to spend. That's what the that's what the money is there for. Capital reserve for fire apparatus. I mean, we need another engine, it's, and if the money's available. Let's take the $150,000 and put it towards the $575,000 and whatever the remaining balance is, that's what he has to, to work with. Um, I think he only has $75,000 plus $2,000 in there right now. Right. right. We have about $77,000 in the bank right now. Yep. Um, but we're looking to we're looking to acquire another seventy five thousand. Right, that's if you get that. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's if. Successful. Yeah, exactly. Has that changed the amount? Because I see one hundred and fifty thousand. I requested one hundred fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand amount requested for two thousand fourteen. Right, that's what I thought. Okay. Oh, all right. I, I was. And what's the next? So you got purchase? seventy-seven. You're requesting one hundred fifty more. Is that what we're doing? That would look correct. Okay, so that, that's a different number. Yeah. Right. So, so if you add the seventy-five and the one fifty, two seven, two twenty-seven. So you take the two twenty-seven away from the five seventy-five, and that's what we adjust that line to. That's if you get the one fifty. That's right. right. If <laughs> the, the goal, the goal with the, the one fifty. Well, there is no big difference. Typically, you don't ask for money and spend right. it in the same year from the All same right, account. Right. Okay. The, the reason for the 150 and the CRF is, is I'm looking down the road and we have a few right. things that, that that are staring at us uh, beyond the, the engine that we're replacing in, in 2014. Um, we, again, we have another engine to replace 
in 2019, but there's a, like a, a rescue boat that we need to do in the meantime. So if, if CRF is funded uh, close to being what, what I request for, uh, when that occurs, um, directly we just pay cash for it and um, not really impact the tax rate at that point. Not spike it out like this if you purchase one at one, one time. I would say put a hundred thousand in to, to uh, the CF, the CRF, uh, because you've got smaller amounts coming up in these out years, 45, 15, you know, we, and that's appropriate for CIP. But then when you get to the 600,000, you're going to have 575,000 in there. So again, that brings that 600 down to a 25,000 or a smaller amount. Without a doubt, uh, by purchasing the, the engine next year, it gives us a break um, because we don't see any big purchases for, for a number of years uh, until we have to replace that next engine. And the latter, which is going to come up in 20 years, but or however many now, but it'll be here before people right. realize it. Chief, lease purchase program. It's an option. Um, I, I think Sue gave a great example earlier of how, how it can impact your your fleet uh, replacement program. Um, in our particular case, um, a lot of communities are blending leases together. For example, if DPW needs vehicles and fire department needs vehicles or police and so on, they blend them together in one package um, to, to just a lease purchase for the one engine you may not see that cost cost benefit um, especially when you get another another vehicle to replace maybe five or seven years down the road what's the life of engine one because your terms might be different from the terms for other vehicles yeah. you usually for, do for, for an engine if you if you buy if you buy you know quality built uh, piece of apparatus uh, or community uh, our experience you're looking at 18 20 year 20 year vehicle So their, their terms of their note would be longer, obviously, yeah. than. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And some of the DPW vehicles. Yeah. But if you had a de depart larger department, um, you, when you've got to constantly replace vehicles, it, it's something to, yeah. to consider. Has um, I don't know if you or Carl have seen lease purchase rates out there any lower than what we got from the bank. That's the bubble we're seeing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to lose the fire truck, but I'm just looking for different ways to try to mm -hmm. get that number down so it's manageable. Correct. <clears throat> So were you changing the CRF from 150000 to 100000 Well, I know I, I heard one amount from Mark. I gave an amount. I don't know if the board has come to a... I'd like to drop that to 100000 I feel pretty comfortable with that. So we'd have seventy five mm -hmm. plus the 2000 drop that to 100000 Correct. Instead of 150, it'd be 100000 All right, goes. And so, where's that going to leave us relative to engine one? Just round, round out the picture for me. I think that stays. That uh, engine one stays, stays right. Stay, that stay as is at five seventy-five. Yep. So. yep. And I think the discussion is: Do you finance it? like to see what the numbers would be yeah finance versus yeah. lease purchase yeah 
before I make a decision, I want to look at it first. Let's see how bad we really are off on this thing. Yeah. Not, well, yeah, we trust not ancient. We, 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 ancient. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. okay with you guys. I really think look at it. Yeah. He can take a look at it, and I'll get yeah, you yeah. Uh, numbers yeah. for financing yeah. it and lease yeah. purchase yeah. for 20 yeah. years, Chief. Term 20 years. I don't think they go up that far. Yeah, I don't think they so. go, they'll go out the life of the uh, equipment, typically. Well, it depends on what they call life of equipment. They may call it 20, but they may call it 10. Then, uh, yeah. Good question. Vehicle needs to be capped at 10. We'll see. Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Phil has a question for you, Chief. Yeah, on uh, engine one, um, where does it stand with certification? <laughs> Didn't get pump certified the other day. I know that. That, that's correct. Cycle so means that we, we every year we certify our pump, we, right. we pump test them. Um, it, it would not pass pump test. Um, the transfer valve is an issue, and they had the issue with a the with prop problem with uh, possibly a piece that had broken off in in the impeller itself, and it's it's fouled up the. Uh, the pump at this so point. Give me some numbers, Chief. What does that mean? What does it need to pass certain gallons per minute delivery? And, it's, and it's, it's a 1,250-gallon-per-minute 12, pump, and it's, it has to achieve that, that pump rating uh, in, order, in order to pass the test. And, and what's that now? Uh, they wouldn't even test it because they knew it just yeah. wouldn't pass. Okay. The, prob the probabilities of that piece doing some major damage could, could definitely happen. Right. And, I mean, knowing what I know about fire apparatus, to rebuild a pump is anyways between six and ten thousand dollars, right, Chief? Right. Yeah, I and mean, that's the thing is that the when we look at a vehicle, it's just not one thing. Uh, they say, well, okay, we're well, going to yeah. take the fill the baby oil out the bath you know, out with the bath water. You got the you got the frame frame issue that that we were given a red flag on. We've got the pump now becoming a real big problem with us, and then we've got electrical issues. We've got front end issues. And it's all kind of coming together um, it, it, where we just make the recommendation. We, we we have to replace the vehicle. Okay, but I have a follow-up yeah, on that. And I understand what you're saying, Chief. And your certifications for a vehicle like Engine 1 is not only on the pump. Is that correct? Well, with you, you have you have Mike Urella does the, the state inspection on it. That's that's right. the operational mechanical inspection uh, on the on the annual certifications on a pump like that. We use. We, we do the annual certification for the pump, fire pump itself, right. and then we do the ground ladders. Uh, the ground ladder testing passed, um, and they've been cert they've been certified. And we do uh, all the hose testing as well. And we do all the hose testing. All the crews do the, the annual hose testing to make sure that they hold up the pressure. And on the pump, do we have the same issue with this pump being 20-year-old vehicle that we had with the pump on the other the prior that we couldn't do? We had to replace the pump. I think that you were talking about is the old engine five. Right. Um, that was a Godiva pump. And, Correct. And that I remember was Godiva very well. Godiva pumps. And oh yeah. <laughs> they were actually built in in um, Great Britain, um, <clears throat> right. and we just couldn't get any replacement parts for it. Um, this is a typical pump, but it's just it's going to need need a total rebuild, um, or hopefully not worse, but the casing itself. I'm, at the, I'm asking the questions to know on a 20-year-old vehicle, when you start having to replace things that require the certification, do we start having problems where we can't get that equipment? Then you have to do a retrofit on the vehicle. Right. Uh, We're also noticing that there's some obsolescence to the parts for, like, the cab right now also. We've been struggling to get some parts, parts for the cab. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Just for the board's edification in your budget report, the fire CRF, if it stays in here, it comes out of CIP and has to be a special article because it's an appropriation to a non-lapsing fund. Right. Okay. So any other discussion on Engine 1 or how about other vehicles in fire? They only had oh, the two ambulance. vehicles. Yeah, the, the ambulance, uh, the ambulance is, in is out. EMS special revenue fund. Yeah. It's not in CIP yep. anymore. Okay. Because we budget for it differently. Yep. We ha every year we have to go through this process to take CIP and reallocate it according to the budget. So some items become special articles. But, uh, I'd like to have that discussion, though. I would like to yep. hold sure. off on sure. the purchase of the ambulance this year. 
Do you want to finish CIP first before we get so we'll, to we'll talk about that later? That's fine. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. vehicles are all DPW vehicles and yep. there are five of them and I believe I heard a request last week from DPW for the vehicles that were requested for 2014 and moved out by CIP you had four of those as I look at the CIP chart Carl is that Tractor, that's the, the so that's the um, Freightliner tractor, the 1995 on that one, and what was the other one? Let's see, there's a 200,000, 110, and 85,000. Which one was it? Oh, it must be. It was a 94 backhoe? Yeah, it's 110. 110. 110. It's line 66. Okay. So, so your request last week was to add those two back into the 2014 budget and reduce the road plan in order to get all these vehicles. Okay. Just want to make sure I understood the request. I'm very comfortable moving out the road plan to try and get a piece of equipment that yep. gets a lot of use in the yard down there. I mean, that backhoe is work every day, every day, constantly. Sun down. the 110 in and look to move out 100 in, in equal amount of the road plan dollars? I think he was asking for two vehicles, each at 110, so that would be yeah. 220,000 to add. Top one. Top one. 55. Oh, the line tractor. Yep, line 55. Tractor and backhoe, each are at 110. Line 55 and line Isn't 66. Isn't that the truck yes. we're repairing now? Mm-hmm. 55? Right. So why are we going to replace it? That was the request. That oh, I know, they, I understand, it was but just a band-aid yeah. to get through this year till you get to next town meeting. Well, we're doing more of a band more than a band-aid fix on it. We're rebuilding the whole load. Well, that's well. I guess we're we're headed that way. That's what I'm getting at. So if we rebuild the whole thing, uh, what was the cost, Carl? Do you, what do we have for a number on that? For what? For the rebuild on that motor? On that? If, if we do the rebuild, yeah, nine thousand dollars. Yeah, nine thousand dollars. I suggest we spend the nine on it and rebuild it and throw the one ten out. And use, you know, it's a hundred thousand dollars savings right there. Yeah, get us by for as long as we can with the rebuild. That's that's a rebuild that's going to last you a long time on that truck. That's it's that, how many miles we put on a year, Carl? We don't we don't put that many miles on a year, do we? Twenty thousand. As the front line tractor ages, the backup gets more miles. Right, but what's the front line putting on for for an average yearly? I'd have to look. It's on the CIB. So if we look at 9,000 for that engine rebuild, 110 for the backhoe. But the 9,000 is already got that's it. Yeah, that's in this year's budget. That's a budget item. 
<clears throat> so that nine thousand will be done this year. Yeah, I think didn't you have yeah, the nine thousand now? Count? You had it someplace in the budget, right? To take care of this year, so we really could. Well, that one tenth could go away altogether. We wanted to just move it out, right? Where did I find it in this year's? Uh, fifty-five, line fifty-five. Well, oh, see, see that. Oh, the, no, 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 it's in this year's current this operating two thousand thirteen. It is in there. Yeah, he's got money to fix it this year. We had the monies to do that. We're going to overspend those lines. Yeah. Yeah, but not by a lot. I mean, we're going to overspend it. Will you still stay within your bottom line budget? Yeah. Depends on what happens in the winter. I would rather see the 110 stay in. I mean, we're fixing the engine. We had the conversation once before. Now that the engine's repaired, now we got the transmission, now we got the rear end, now we got the front end. We have yeah, that's minor stuff. That you, yeah, it's, you can't. It's you minor, but you take five thousand here, ten thousand here, five thousand. Spend twenty thousand dollars on the truck market. Spend one hundred and ten to buy a new truck. Do the math. Ninety thousand dollars savings to taxpayers. A lot of money. I understand. Well, well then, what path don't you get about saving the money? That's we're all talking about saving money. Stop spending money. My taxes are up high enough as it is, and I, I know eighteen thousand the same boat. Nine R two. Let's focus on the meeting. Well. You can move on, Mr. Chair. It's just yeah. for the record, let it show that I'm not in favor of removing the hundred and ten thousand dollars. The hundred and ten is not in there right, right. now. Well, anyway. right. So the the question before out. the board is do they want to we'll add it, the one ten? Yeah. Yeah. I was bring it back in. So our Folks comfortable with bringing the backhoe back in? Because I was moved out, so I'm bring that back in at 110. Yes or no? If we're on, if we're if we're heading the track, we're heading, Mr. Chair. Let's get that thing rebuilt as well. Left side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to pull out the road plan, that's fine. I mean, no, I, that's that's what the that's suggestion is. I mean, if you have to pull out the road plan, pull the money off the road plan, and we can drop down the road plan for the. To buy the new back, oh, I'm good with that. We're going to get some kind of value out of the trade on That's it. That's what I assumed we were doing. That's what yeah. I was comfortable with. Yeah. We got some value, and I mean, it's not a lot, I'm sure, but even on the open market, somebody give you $10,000 for it. So we take money off the road plan. Other folks, have the 110 back in for the backhoe, take it out of the road plan. Like the idea? Not. Nah. Chime in. <laughs> Maybe we should have a conversation on what the road plan is going to be before we. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but okay, yeah, we can just lay it on the table. And we'll, yeah. well, I'm just we'll saying because it was a million dollars last no, year. This year it's no, two right. million. No, it needs to be looked at in context right. to the other stuff. Well, I guess my question is if the backhoe is the same price as the tractor, how much does it cost to repair the backhoe? Thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm good with that. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what the problems are with the backhoe. Caterpillar worked up a rough estimate for us to the point where it didn't make sense. Uh, they'd have to get it and tear into it to give us a better estimate, and we'd have to spend money to get the estimate. But their advice was it was not going to be cost effective to recover. So they didn't really give you a number, just said based well, upon I think this. They were up around 40, just like that. Yep. It was half the value of the new one. Alan wins the auction this Friday at. Uh Books it. Is it this Friday? Uh, yeah, I think Ryan's actually having one this week. And who would we be buying it from? Go off a bid. Yeah, you might grab some at the But the big so. auction there. Uh, yeah, Richie's having this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be a place to look, that's for sure. I mean, we can buy, you can certainly buy some vehicles that are in good shape that the people have lost. They lost a shirt on and they're still in good shape. You can pick them up really short money. That's something we got to look at, that's for sure. Well, I would assume this is the first pass through this. This yeah, is going to be the, the last. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. One as many. So we'll put that in the back of our mind. We'll yeah. look at the road plan. We'll, we'll look at the road plan and come back to public and the, and the loader potentially coming back? Yes. Is that the one we were yes. talking about? Yeah. Great. Can I just comment on the auction idea? Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. I think the auction's this Friday, right, Carl? Yeah, we, we've looked at 
trying to do that before for a government entity an auction is a very difficult thing because a you folks would have to waive everything in our purchasing policy we have no ability to write a check they usually don't take a bid at an auction on credit um, you usually have to pay something to secure the bid we really have no mechanism to do it so as great of an idea as it is not really a practical one we used to have money in the budget so if something came up in surplus you know government surplus we could go after it but we haven't had that money for years so we haven't paid much attention to what comes up in surplus but it's you know, auction might be okay, and it works for a private guy that can pull out a checkbook and write a check, but we just don't have that ability. Unless we found a way to do it. Yep. Well, they might be receptive because they know that if a town is buying, they know you're going to back it up one way or another. They're not going to. But where is the money going to come from to yeah. buy the piece well, of equipment? Right. right. You're going to have cash yeah. in the end. Right, cash in hand. But if we were talking about saving five, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars or something, we could. I understand, that. but yeah. how do you go to the auction well, and w I'll I'll take the piece of equipment if you'll yeah. take a check from twenty fourteen. Yeah. No, that won't work. No, no, I understand that. I mean, that's something that maybe maybe we have to go down that avenue and take a look at that. Not, not necessarily for this year, but maybe further out. A lot of vehicles get auctioned off, and they're really in good shape. And you can. Well, that's a whole procedural thing we'd have to right. investigate, and that's going to take some time. Right. And it's it's not going to work this year. We can deal with that this year. Yeah. So. No. But that's put, that's it, put in the memory banks for Mark. That's a good idea, though. Yes. Really okay. I'm about to buy gold. I can steal something really cheap. Like I'll still get two for I'm going eight. there. I'll be there Friday. There you go. What else do folks see in, in CIP for? Discussion tonight. Again, understanding we can you know, have to rework up some numbers and give us a clean matrix and you know, what the effect of the changes we've suggested so far in the bottom line is. And then all those is there something else in the CIP that we want to discuss tonight? Yeah. That's, that's the Jay, biggest. Can we get into the road plan? Yeah. Maybe can we get uh, library and the other people that are here tonight so that we don't hold them any longer than we have to. And we can come back. We can come back to the other stuff after. Would be in favor of that. I mean, they. Yeah, I would be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's get let's get them home. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to go Rick, first? Rick, come on up. <laughs> Please. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. And you? Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. CIP for Park and Rec. We don't have anything. We don't There's have anything. nothing. Here. No, that's the impact fees. Paying Which for is Barnard Land, I think. Sixty-five thousand in impact fees to be used for the Barnard and Perry land development. Would you bring that project to what point? Um, phase one, which is phase one, um, is basically uh, two rectangular fields, um, some uh, well development of a well for irrigation. And uh, within the development of the rectangular fields, it'll be laying irrigation lines um, and some crude work on cutting out a parking area. Question, yep. Question for Carl. Will, the, um, will that land be at the point where we can be putting in fields next year as far as utili utilization of the minerals and... Rough yeah, we, we've um, kind of cleaned up, and we got a few stockpiles, but nothing big. Um, so it's it's basically ready now. So it's it's rough grade, approximate rough grade. So it's yeah. 
So the sixty-five thousand well, would be to bring in some bring in a well irrigation lines to finish. Basically, grade. that's what that was figured out on is is the cost of two fields to put in the irrigation lines and to build a well. That's what that comes up. And to. establish the fields. Yeah. With grass. Yes. And some sort of an informal parking area at this point. Very informal. Alan? Yes. Quick question: Are you going to put a, a, an artesian well there? I have no idea what kind of well. I'm just we're I'm put curious because I know if you're only well, it's going to work for us, and we'll investigate what kind of well we we'll put in there. What so. kind of well would you put in? There? Well, I'm just saying because if you're going to go to an artesian well down there, that, that gravel is deep, and you may be going a long ways to the ledge. Mm -hmm. The casing will cost you more than the well will cost you when you get done. Nowadays, for the pipe cost of the casing. Well, yeah. You could look at maybe. You, you, did you look at maybe trying to get a uh, water line off the back? What line? I did just to get a good number yeah. is I went to Capital Well System. And, yeah. Uh, I said, okay, give me a worst case scenario. If we have to build a well, what's it going to cost? And they said it's going to be anywhere between ten thousand and twenty thousand dollars, depending on how far and what you have to fracture and to get the water supply to get your um, gallons per minute. So we factored in the higher number. What was the nearest? What's the nearest line we could possibly get to for a water line? The nearest line, there's a uh, fire hydrant over by the White House on um, at Elm Street. Yeah. You have a. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to pipe it up uh, up the road to get it to the property line. That's about a hundred dollars a foot and then for the cast iron pipe. Yeah. And then buy the water. And then, yeah, the water bill. And then, and then five the, years you pay water. for the well. <laughs> Um, I can sir, you got any idea how much overburden is left before bedrock out there? I mean, has well, did it, you know, as you move up the hill towards the DPW yard, you come into ledge sooner. It drops off towards the river pretty, pretty steep, but up in uh, Locust Hill, there's ledge everywhere. Right. That hole, that's a log. You know, it's good, but also it, as you come down. Hey, you might get lucky. It, yeah. Well. Maybe it's yeah, worth having somebody go and do a boring. Yeah, that's nice to a test. I mean, for that, some short money to at least give us some idea what we're up against. Well, actually, if you're going to be using it for irrigation, you don't necessarily have to have an art a drilled well because you're not, you don't have to have potable water for that. We could build a pond. Well, there's what I'm saying is that if you look at the water table that's there, the water table is you you have water on the property. So if you got sand and gravel, you could certain times of the year you have water. Yeah, it goes bone dry. Well, you you've got water running through the property. Mm -hmm. and if you got sand and gravel, you're going to go down. You're going to hit water. Water. Ta I think you'll find the water table will probably be adequate before you hit the ledge. Hey, can yeah. a reservoir pipe on the because you don't need potable water for irrigation. Yeah, but the problem with ponds is you're going to have a big liability issue. You're going to have a lot of kids around there. I, I, we've, I've seen these before. I mean, it's always a bad thing. have a fishing know. derby, our first fishing derby, <laughs> right there in the pond, the annual Nobody. the annual Parks and Recreation Fishing Derby, right in that water. Rick, when I was on the... It's Dr. Trout. When I was on the commission right. last year, you know, they talked about possibly it. getting water out of the river. There's, I mean, there's talks, there's all kinds. Of, it's, it's so premature. I mean... You know, can you can you build a, uh, a retaining system so that drainage water goes into a pond? Can you spend the money and, and tap it in from Locust Hill from the road to go with municipal water? Then the concern becomes, well, Grassmere District, do they have enough water pressure to even supply the pressure needed to run um, your pumping systems? Will you have to increase your pump size down at the at the field area? There's another location over on Henry Bridge Road. There's a fire hydrant over there. You'd have to cut across brook. the brook. Um, it's not. It, it doesn't stop. It just keeps going. So, I mean, I think the initial just to get some irrigation water, I think a well makes some decent sense. I mean, you're rolling the dice if that thing goes dry. Yes, you are. But um, I think that's the lesser of the evils of money-wise. I think it costs you a heck of a lot of money to pipe the municipal water. Up that way. Because there's the ongoing cost of the water. Right. And, it's an right. and that never goes away. Right. That's right. Just a point of order, Mr. Chairman, is that this is not, this does not appear oh. in your budget. Yeah, I yeah, know. Okay. I'm just having fun talking about okay. building <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I get the hell out of here. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> Reality check. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Well, we started off tonight looking at everything as is. And that's a $12.59 tax rate increase. We've well, made that would be the tax rate. That would be the tax rate. That's not the amount of the increase. Correct. Yeah, it's a $2.87 <laughs> increase. Right. Still bad, <laughs> but not as bad. We've made some reductions in CIP, mm -hmm. but I think the reality is we have to look at big numbers. Big, small, I think we have to look at everything. I mean, I, I don't know how we, I don't think our, we're going to reach our goal of maintaining the tax rate. It's going to be a matter of what is the smallest impact how, we how can. How close can we come? Smallest mm -hmm. hit, yeah. I think even that's going to be um, difficult. But Ten cents on I mean, the $65,000 at Rick's, I mean, it's impact fees. Yeah, that's that's a yeah. that's a that's wash. Not that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's not yeah, even in the budget. Yeah. Books. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Glad we could help. <laughs> Short, sweet, to the point. Anything else for Rick? Anything else for Rick? Next Wednesday in place of well, well, we're talking about his whole operating budget, not right. the CIP, right? So there, there's, um, you know, there's not much here for the whole ball of wax. Right. So that's tab yeah. six in your books. Sue, you had to say that? Sorry, you better say it. We're getting away that easy. You wouldn't want to have to come back on the would you? I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. We told you you could go. I mean, you're really, you're, you're looking at a $1,900 operations increase. No, that's um, benefits. That's not even that. 2100 for consulting services, which is for your men's basketball league, which is getting bigger. Well, a few things you got. But that's yeah. included in the, the increase. The $9,700 increase to the equipment maintenance supply, that's for 15000 to replace a new commercial mower. $400 operations increase and a $3,420, no, not even a $1,300 increase for programs. Everything else is pretty much a decrease or mm -hmm. so the big items the more right mm -hmm. yes. repair it <laughs> <laughs> Lease it. Lease one. <laughs> How old is your current mower? One is a uh, 2006 and one is a 2004. They have about 2,300 hours on each of them. And what are the kind of maintenance issues we're seeing with them? It's, now you're getting into like hydraulic parts. Um, getting into some radiator issues, getting into um, more computerized things. Starting to get a little more entailed. The new ones that much better. They are even worse. <coughs> Too much computerized stuff on them. Well, there ain't a whole lot to talk about here. We're looking at a mower and art, aren't we? <laughs> I think it's what it boils down to. Everything else seems to balance itself out, more or less. I don't know the exact numbers, but we're talking about small numbers. Can you get by another year? If we have to. What would I, I mean, what I'd like to see if, um, to uh, on that line, by taking the the mower out of there, what we did is we kind of prioritized what as far as equipment goes, on what we look at as our priorities, and the mower would be one of them. Um, 
The next on the list would be a uh, walk behind brush hog. Um, and then possibly a snow thro a new snow thrower. The one that we have is pretty pretty shaky. But um, so I mean if we brought it down to the six thousand twenty five dollars as opposed to the fourteen seven five, I think that would be doable. See, pull out the mower and replace it with a, a snow blower and a, and a brush and a walk yep. Yes. And the, and the total for those two is what I guess. It's about six thousand dollars. Might be good since we're just talking about this on the rails and trail cutting the mower, right? So that line will remain. It would be even. It would stay. Yeah. Yes. So what's the benefit of doing it? So what's the benefit of doing what? It's a ninety-seven hundred dollar reduction. Yeah. It would be the same as this year. Right. Right oh, now. Oh, I miss. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yes. I miss on. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> it's nine grand up. I I I I understood what was happening was we were taking ninety seven out and putting ninety seven back in. Oh, okay. That's why I asked that question. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't. You know, it's after nine o'clock at night, and I just want to make yeah. sure that wasn't something so that. It's a, it's a savings you know, of nine thousand. Nine thousand seven seven. $9,745. Right, that's the number that's in there. No, the number in there is 15 No, 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 the number that's on from last year. On the sheet here. Oh, oh, okay. No, this is just on the, from this sheet that he gave us. I'm good with that. Yep. You can live with that, Rick. You can live with it. For tonight's discussion, again, we're going to we'll have to... There'll be one more than one round of these things, but I think it's a good start. The other thing you do too is ask. Uh, you got an increase that says on the programs the increases are in that line. You could also take a look at maybe asking somebody to review the uh, program fees. Yep. Weren't they going to be reviewed annually or after the initial? They were initially started. You were going to review them. They they are reviewed every year. We okay. review program fees every year. <coughs> We said we're going to look at all possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, we good, Rick. We good, Rick. What, are you suggesting um, funding programs through the revolving fund? No, it says in here, in this handout that Rick had given yeah, us, he talks feet. about this line here, program 66100. Mm -hmm. All program expenses run through this line. It's offset... Uh, program fees. Increase. Okay. So the expenses are run through the line. The only thing I was saying is to look at the fees to see if they need to be adjusted for okay. compensate for the increase. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. All Thank good. You, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Done the math, but I think that brings Parks and Rec down to like a 2.7 percent increase, or just a little bit below three. Page twenty, right? Yes. I don't know. My pages are all number one because I'm oh. number one. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old ones, page twenty-eight. The new ones, number one from earlier today.
Consulting Services. Yeah. What is that for? That is for legal review and legal review for our personnel plan. And we did pay legal fees this year for the first time, so we are anticipating maybe some for next year. And is last year the or this year the first time you had that in there? Because I don't see a figure in 2012. Yeah. That's correct. The last time we used it was 2008, I believe, when we hired a consultant for our planning and our building program. There was, I believe, $2,500 in there in 2013, and we're anticipating using some of that. Um, we're planning a retreat for the uh, library staff and trustees that may be December, it may be pushed out now till January, but we're planning on using some of that for a facilitator and, and for that retreat as well. Computer hardware, software, I, I understand. I know that is all for upgrading your um, your network. Is that, um, is it possible to do that in a multi-year, maybe half next year, half the year after? I think the answer to that is no. That's pretty much how we got into the problem we're in now, by doing piecemeal work and never replacing the entire network. So we have four networks, and they all really need to be replaced all at one time. The equipment needs to be replaced. Um, at, at all at once. We talked to the town IT. You're talking about the fifty six hundred dollars increase, roughly. Mm -hmm. Right. We yeah. talked to the town IT department about that, and one of the things is we're going to be reducing the amount of hardware by at least half. Uh, but a number of the things that we have in there now were built for residential right. systems, and right. your access they certainly points. see more than that. So it, it really, I think, is is one of those that it, it takes upgrading it to today's technology, and if we I think the last router we had before this came from Cabletron when Governor Benson was in there. So <laughs> I think by trying to piecemeal it, we're going to keep having some of the same problems that, and as the library sees more and more use from inside, it's, it's going to be more of a problem. Your books and publications had a three thousand dollar increase. Yes. Yes. Do you have any trust funds for that purpose? We already revenue some of it. We revenue the interest every year against that line, but that only comes to about three hundred dollars. I think is what we've been. It's not a lot of money. The line that was a big increase was G milks, but you don't have any control over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do not. She gave a good explanation of that, too. At least I thought. I'll throw so <laughs> I'll make a stab. Um, I, I have three items. Um, the consulting services reduced that by two thousand dollars, leave five hundred dollars. Um, reduce the books and publications by three thousand dollars, and reduce the tuition reimbursement by thirty-five hundred. Leaving that at the level it was. What did you say about tuition reimbursement? It's a new line now, I think. Yeah, it is. The forty-four well, thousand. Well, it's, it's been it split. Was it was five thousand. Yeah. So what are you recommending? Say that again, please. Put that to three thousand. Is that what you said? Reduce it by thirty-five hundred. So it'd be three thousand. So it'd be three. Three thousand ten. Are you looking oh, at the forty-four two hundred line? Yes. Forty-four yes. two hundred. Yes. yes. But there has no history of anything in it. Well, it used to be it was with employee, employee development. development. Yeah. So the so total of those two were five thousand in this year's budget. 
Correct. And in 2012, it was 1585 expended, and this year, year to date, is 3633. <clears throat> tuition reimbursement for what? what, what what's the tuition? It is for our head of youth services who's working on her graduate degree through Drexel University. It's a, it's a uh, master's in library information studies. And so we're paying for a portion of her? 50% of the courses that she anticipated taking next year. That's the 6510. Right. So this would cut the number of courses in half. Correct. So she'll take, less than half. Yeah, she'll take two maybe. I mean, and, and that can come from either two lines. If, if so you like, I mean, you could reduce that. employee development by some as well if you wanted to. Oh, please don't. <laughs> okay, and there were two other lines I think you mentioned. That, that Books and publications and consulting services. You, uh, consulting services, you were looking to reduce that to $500 yeah. mm -hmm. and the books and publications, you were looking to reduce level funded to the right. same as 2013. What would the new number be, Sue? They haven't done that we, yet, Mark. Um, I'd have to carry. On the, on the uh, books of publication? No, no, I'm looking for the total. Total? total. The total? Yeah. I have to carry yeah. over oh, That's something. fine. Let's see. I get the total. <laughs> If I could, the other reality, too, is we could total those up and give them to the library trustees and have them Figure break, where, where right, because we'll it's really, the savings. Yeah. you know, they may want to move it around and do it somewhere else. 731, 735. That sound right? Let's see. You won't get it. Hmm? Yep. Total savings. Total savings. Eighty-five hundred bucks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So thirty-seven thousand increase, but we brought it down eighty-five hundred. Yeah, so down mm -hmm. two thousand uh, twenty-eight thousand six fourteen is increase. Yes, sir. The tuition reimbursement, just to speak to that a little bit, our re policies require the children's librarian to have um, an advanced degree, which she's now working towards. We currently have one person in the library who has a Master of Library Science, and that's the, the director. So if anything were to happen to her, there is literally no one to fill in her shoes. So this was an attempt to uh, promote from within and, and to fill needs that are already in there by allowing for advancement. So that's that's why this was understood. Thank you. Um, I don't see anything else. 
in the budget we're going to look at. Does anybody? On, our, on the first pass, I don't <laughs> know. It's, yeah. it's, well, we'll numbers, work up, we'll the work numbers, up the numbers and see. The numbers are so close. I mean, it's, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, I think Diane did a, a great job yeah. on the numbers, you know, and, and so did Rick, you know. There's increases in areas that would be outside our control, as yeah. we already know. Yeah. So we thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back in touch. Thank you. I mean, the two budgets we did look at tonight, I mean, they were minimally increased. What do you, I mean, yeah, where do you take the stuff away, you know? Parks and Rec is such a small budget to begin yeah, with. Yeah, are, yeah. It's a, to try yeah. to find savings is... Yeah, we're only going to hurt them. Just share on yes. the uh, increases. I know we've been, all the budget, all the um, departments have been budgeting for 3%. Um, I'd like the board to consider us budgeting at 2%, which would allow for a bell curve type of distribution. You have three people that get 3%, people that get 1%, people who may not get any, and then the majority of your people are at 2%. Um, it, it puts more pressure on the department heads to to do those those evaluations, um, but I think roughly I looked at um, just the budgeting savings as a vehicle, a cruiser. There by budgeting at two percent versus three percent. That was for six months, wasn't it? That was for six years? months. Yeah. So over a year it could be two vehicles. Mm -hmm. Did you just, is that based just on non-union? No. Oh, okay. I can do it for non-union if you want to see what that number looks yeah, like. Yeah, I would like to see that number, yes. Okay. this budget does not have any increases in wages for the three unions that are negotiating right now. Okay, what, what else do folks want to tackle tonight? We still have a non-public we have to deal with, so let's keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to do it on Tuesday night. Well, actually, next <coughs> is the 22nd. Oh, 22nd, we can have Yeah. So are folks comfortable that we've covered some ground tonight? Mm -hmm. some point where, so we can start... <laughs> Make an adjustment to some numbers, bring it back to us. Um, At least it's a start. Yeah, well, it's a start. Yeah, and it was on top yeah. of our regular agenda, so I think we covered some ground tonight. At least I'm comfortable that we have. And, and that bear, by, by your next meeting, you will know the insurance rates. That would be helpful, yeah. Yeah. And then the 22nd is merely a workshop, so we don't have any other agenda items. So right. I, I Just a budget. Yeah, I think right. we got. I think we got a pretty good jump on it tonight. If others feel that way, then uh, the only other thing on the agenda tonight is the uh, non-public. Oh, that one's canceled. Sorry. The non-public's canceled? Yes. Oh. What? I would like to go. Oh, you would? Okay. Yeah, then it's on. Then it's back on. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're here, huh? So, um, anything else that won't the business can these come before the board? If not, we'll let folks know we're going into non-public so they don't have to just sit up any longer than go catch the end of the game or whatever. <laughs> what game? Three to three. Is a game going on? Baseball? Yeah, Red Sox. Red Sox are on? Red Sox. Red Sox fever everywhere. Okay, so we need a motion to go into non-public. So we'll make a motion to go non-public. Under RSA. Yeah, it wants to change it. Here it is. RSA 91 A colon 3 Roman 2 A compensation. Second that. Motion and a second. We need a roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. We're in non-public. 